Yo, good morning, good morning. What's up? Hopefully you guys are feeling the new look here. <laughs> um, we got Air, uh, Anna Puga today for the morning routine. What is this, number 42? Number 58? I have no idea. Um, we don't exactly have her on the line yet. She'll be joining us soon, so I'm going to sit here and blab my mouth off a little bit and uh, hopefully this is all working um i can just talk about all the new stream designs and um, things that i've been doing obviously that loading screen was new it's just a template for now i'm going to uh you know make it my own but um working on that in some like uh transitions between scenes and also using some new software uh those of you who are interested in streaming uh, Streamlabs OBS is live for Mac and I had no idea I just found out yesterday so um, spent all day yesterday trying to figure it out and it's all kind of a uh, kind of new and it doesn't exactly work uh, smoothly with uh, the a10 mini that I used to switch cameras yet so I'm kind of figuring out how to do it properly so Alex, thank you for the uh, super chat. Um, one thing I do like about the Streamlabs OBS is that I can see everything on um, the screen without having YouTube up. And look, there's a little animation. Oh, sweet. Shows up on the screen. Again, thank you, Alex, for that. Um, so this is all new for me. Um, and unfortunately for Anna, we are testing it on her. Uh, interview. It shouldn't be that bad, but uh, we'll see. So um, those of you who are familiar with Anna, still waiting for her to come in. She's not here yet. Um, or, or who are unfamiliar with Anna, um, we did a, a video in uh, Mexico City. It was in June of 2018. So coming up on uh, our two-year anniversary. And, uh, you know, it's it's one of those videos that uh, I was surprised. Not su it wasn't surprised. What it was was the contrast between riding with uh, Safa and then I rode with Anna the very next day. It was, we agreed that Anna was going to take us like on a mellow bike ride. So uh, we, uh, we did it kind of mellow, but it still got so much traction because she's fast. Uh, and like some of you know, she's got, uh, crazy uh, cadence and uh, some speed and if you haven't seen the video I recommend go checking it out it's uh, Anna Puga it's like fixed gears in Mexico City you'd find it um, anyway what else can I talk about uh, I don't know if you guys are feeling the intro of me just walking in putting my bike down <laughs> uh, you don't know who I am and why you're here. There's, there's a lot of people here today. Uh, hopefully there's a big uh, audience from, uh, from the Mexico area. Uh, Anna's from Mexico City, or she lives in Mexico City anyways. We'll find out more about her once she comes on. But uh, hopefully there's some, uh, you know, some people from over there watching in, tuning in today. There seems to be a little more than, than normal, so that's cool. Um, again, um, bear with me as I massage out all these hiccups and uh, mistakes I'm definitely going to make with all this new software and things going on. So, uh, I do have something to show right now though. So I want to share um, a video. I have the uh, closed cap captions on and this is one of the most recent videos I saw uh, on YouTube with her. Um, and hopefully, <sighs> hopefully, what do we get? Um, hopefully you can understand everything. Uh, those of you who don't speak Spanish, the closed captions are on for English. And, uh, let's just, let's just check this out. This should be good, right? Let's see. Let me turn this on. Well, this is the first time. I'm probably gonna fuck it up. And hit play here and Estuvo bien chistoso porque yo nice. trabajaba en una agencia de publicidad en Santa Fe. 
Entonces esto de ir y venir y que mi única prestación era la tarjeta de estacionamiento, el tráfico, las obras en periférico, o sea, como que todo fue como, ya sabes, llenándote de frustración y de como desesperación y eso. Hasta que un día renuncié y conseguí un trabajo en Polanco y ya sabes, en un ataque de locura dije, ay, estaría bien padre irme al trabajo en bici. Y me compré una bici, que era una bici de estas de como holandesas de 144 rayos, así pesadísima. Y me empecé a ir, a, me la entregaron allá en la oficina, entonces dije, ¿cómo me la llevo? Pues pedaleando, ¿no? O sea, al día siguiente se me hizo fácil la ciudad, pues me voy pedaleando otra vez y así, ¿no? Entonces de hacerme una hora en metro, esa es la primera vez hice una hora y 15 minutos de camino a, a la oficina. Este, y eventualmente en unos 3, 4 meses ya me estaba haciendo 40 minutos, hasta que pues ahorita ya me hago 25 minutos a Polanco. O sea, y bueno, a, a partir de ahí, pues, bueno, me acabé esa bicicleta, y empecé a comprarme, me compré otra de velocidades, ya me compré como bicicletas un poco más elaboradas, hasta que conocía, en un alicat conocí a varios amigos, que ya son amigos míos, este, que ya ellos empezaron a hacer, este, bueno, andaban en piñón fijo, entonces ya sabes, cómprate tu pixi y todo eso, también me armé mi pixi y pues, a partir de ahí ya empecé como a meterme un poco más. Hablando concretamente de los alicats, son estos rallies como por toda la ciudad, entonces hay, sí hay muchas chicas que, que le entran porque pues, o sea, son como aguerridas y todo, sin embargo sí hay como luego como diferencia, a veces mucha diferencia entre los premios. Ahorita últimamente la, la cultura de, de alicat como que está como en pausa, que espero que, que, que la recuperemos porque o sea, son eventos padres, ¿no? O sea, este, en febrero corrí el Monster Track, o el, bueno, lo intenté porque me perdí, este, pero sí es otro, otro, completamente otro tipo de, de... Bueno, no, es este... La ciudad es distinta, pero aquí en Ciudad de México tenemos todo para hacer un alicat de la talla del Monster Track, sin problemas. Pero está como en pausa, o sea, la, los principales organizadores ahorita como que están en receso y la verdad espero que lo vuelvan a, a armar, pues. Estoy ahorita lo que estoy haciendo más es este Criterium, que sí parte de, es como, salió de la cultura del Alicat, el Criterium, pero ahorita ya es, se, se ha ido como, como profesionalizando a un ritmo tan agigantado que hace, en 2016 en Londres este, se, se metió a la pista Danny King, que es una atleta olímpica británica, y pues básicamente eliminó a todas las competidoras. Entonces, o sea, así de agigantado ha sido la, la, la evolución. Y sí empezó igual, así como eh, originalmente el, el criterio más importante a nivel mundial es Red Hook. Este, empezó siendo una fiesta de cumpleaños, ¿no? Así de, peda por mi cumple, vamos a hacer una carrerita aquí alrededor de la cuadra. Y pues ahorita es, este es el onceavo año que se hace. Tiene tres sedes, bueno, tres, cuatro sedes, y este, tres de ellas son en Europa, entonces es este, ya es un evento de talla internacional. Llegué ahí por accidente porque había una... hicieron una competencia chiquita en Guadalajara, y ya sabes, ya regresas con el orgullo picado, ¿no? Así de, me caí, me fue súper mal, lo tengo que volver a hacer. Y, este, y la siguiente fecha de, ese, de esas carreras iba a ser en Ciudad de México. Y todo estuvo muy divertido porque me volví a caer, pero, o sea, con el rush de adrenalina y también, este, pues terminó en que creo que accidentalmente la gané, lesionada y todo, y pues ya sabes, ¿no? Bueno, ¿y qué sigue? No, pues mira, está el Monster Track, o, o sea, ya sabes, como que me empezaron a, a sugerir diferentes como competencias, y un día estaba como scrolleando en internet y me acordé de la existencia de Red Hook, y pues así, ya sabes, seguir, seguir, iniciar sesión, pagar, ahí ya me inscribí. Y así empecé en 2015. Ahorita ya llevo, este es mi cuarto año, estoy intentando conseguir fondos para seguir compitiendo en diferentes circuitos. Este, sin embargo, como ahorita es, esa categoría no existe aquí en, eh, ni en México ni en el país, este, pues tengo que correr fuera, ¿no? Y, y sí, para eso me estoy entrenando en competencias de ruta, en circuitos de ruta y todo eso, que es lo que hay aquí. Pues, la verdad es que la ciudad es bien, o sea, sí es una ciudad agresiva, pero no es... No hay mucha diferencia con rodar en Nueva York, ¿no? O sea, si, es más, si, si ruedas aquí, en, en, ahora sí que el que rueda en Ciudad de México puede rodar en cualquier lado, ¿no? Entonces lo único es empezar a, a sentirse seguro, ¿no? Entre más seguridad proyectes tú en el, en el camino este, o, o, en, o en, en que te tomas tu carril y todo eso, este, vas a estar bien. O sea, o, y ser, con, o sea ser, ser fluido, ser constante es ser invisible, pero a la vez visible, ¿no? O sea, invisible para el flujo, eh, bien, sí fluir con el, con, el, con, el, con, el, con el tránsito, pero, pero mantenerte visible, mantenerte seguro. Y ya, o sea, todo es cuestión de subirse y, por ejemplo, si quieres empezar a entrenar es 
este, empezaste un circuito o una ruta, pase lo que pase, terminarla. Ahí, de ahí marcas un parámetro y de ahí empiezas a trabajar contra ti mismo, cada vez. O sea, esta, me hice 40 minutos en la vuelta, ¿no? Ahora voy a hacer 38, 35. Y hasta que vas mejorando, mejorando, mejorando tu tiempo, lo que sea. Y este, pues es contra ti mismo, eventualmente hasta que los demás va, empiezas a pasar a los demás como referencia. Ya de repente ya te paras en el podio y así. Sí, sí, sí. Pero es con, siempre contra uno mismo. O sea, para superarse. All right. <laughs> that was a... Uh... Basically, what that was was something the the most recent video I found on uh on YouTube with Anna after the one that we filmed. Let me see if she's here. She said she's gonna be a little late. She's still not here. That's okay. Um. Anyways, yeah. Um. There was a little glitch there. I'm sorry about the uh, graphic. Uh, on the bottom corner, it was covering some of the subtitles. See, I told you there would be issues. Um, so those of you who are just joining, we got Anna Puga coming in today. Um, as soon as she's done, she's actually handling, she's working from home. So, um, she's got things to do there. <coughs> Let me see what else I can pull up while we're waiting. But basically, um, that last video... Um, was just talking about her and uh, racing in Red Hook Crit, as you saw. It looked like it was all filmed at the uh, the velodrome there in Mexico City. So, let's see what else. What else can I pull up on her real quick? <laughs> um, I know what I got. All right, we got something good here. Let's see. Um, we can do the little, uh, we can do the Anna Puga BTS while we wait. If I can find it. What's up with you guys? You guys have your coffee? You guys have uh, a little coffee? I got a little 12 ounce. Uh, I made some uh, some coffee at the house, had some breakfast. Um, since this was a little later, I don't know if you guys know, 10 a.m. is, uh, it's easy to do when I'm at my house, but to come to the studio, it's a little, it's pushing it a little bit. <laughs> that means I got to wake up at eight and then, you know, I, I lay around for a second. I get up, you know, handle my business, shower and all that, get ready. And then I want to be here before 10 to start this so it, it takes a minute you know so this later one was great okay we have anna here so i'm gonna get anna on the line now i'm done talking about me so we can get anna in here um let me set her up real quick and make sure this is all good um how can i get rid of my photo here um let's see let's see so we got anna on the on the horn let me go full screen real quick and i will introduce her in a sec oh my goodness there we go so unfortunately since we're using google there's going to be a little bit of a ch uh, kind of a mess up thing but it's okay we'll figure it out so um we will do this and that Hello. Hi. What's, hey. what's going on? Good morning. I just finished a uh, good morning. How are you? Good. Welcome. There's a problem with Thank my you. stream. So yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the, uh, the morning routine. Good to have mm -hmm. you here. Um, this is Anna Puga, everybody. We met um, when uh, my first time in Mexico, my only time in Mexico City, really. And uh, first in many, we hope. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I get to come back. Um, yeah, please do. <laughs> and what is going on here? Okay. I, I broke something. That's okay. We, we'll, we'll keep moving on. I'm, I'm getting, so I'm trying all this new stuff on you. I'm sorry. I try to make it look all fancy and I'm messing it up. Um, so we have, uh, uh, we have Anna Puga here. Anna, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh-oh. You just, we just lost you. There you are. 
Uh, okay. A little bit about yeah. yourself, and then I'll, I'll t we'll just get into just chatting how we met and everything. Okay, uh, it's 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 pretty weird because if they if, if someone tells you to introduce yourself, it's like where the fuck did I start? Yeah. It's like okay. Uh, well, uh, I am actually an industrial designer. I work for advertising, but it, this whole biking thing started accidentally when I got tired of Mexico City's traffic and I, by impulse, bought a bike. And then they, the the retailer just sent it to my office, so I had to actually ride the fucking thing <laughs> to my house. And then I. Uh, and that's how it this all this shit started, and it has been an, an accidentally the best thing in my life. <laughs> that's awesome. So you came about yeah. it uh, by accident, just by yeah, absolutely. having to commute, basically. Or yeah, that's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And then you you yeah. grew into uh, into more taking it more seriously after you um, after you're commuting more, and you just found out what was it the freedom of riding or the feeling? What was it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I became way more, uh, a lot more efficient Yeah. just by, I mean, commuting by the city metro is a thing, but it was like too complicated where I used to live. I had to make three like station changes from, oh. uh, from one line to another. So uh, it, it, it took me like a whole hour running with between the, the trains and, and everything like uh, but afterwards, I realized firstly that I made the same time riding in the bike and fooling around and everything. And yeah. afterwards, then uh, I just started uh, like when I got a little bit of physical condition and I, I got a better route and everything. Um, it just became like a lot faster. Like at the hour it took me to get to the office became 40 minutes, 30 mm. minutes. Now I can get there in 20 minutes which is kind of insane. I don't recommend it, but <laughs> I can if I'm in a, in a hurry. If you're in a hurry, you can make it. <laughs> yeah, in, in elegant mode, we say. <laughs> yeah. There's not much of going to the mm -hmm. office these days, though, right? No, not really. And, uh, and uh, now my office is like a half a mile walking from here, so oh. I walk. Oh, it's okay. It's pretty soothing not to... Uh, I just try not to. Yeah. So when did you, when did you cross the, the line into... Uh, racing because we just so to give you a little backstory of what's been going on the stream ha as i was waiting for you to come on mm -hmm. uh, i just ran my mouth for a little bit <laughs> and probably bored everybody okay. and then um i uh, played a video one of the most recent videos i saw on you it was basically an interview when you're at the velodrome um mm -hmm. and i just put the subtitles on for people who can't speak spanish but i think there's a huge okay. uh spanish speaking i i think you brought in a bunch of people because this is a big this is a lot of people in here it's like there was like 250 people earlier that's cool. i just went so ecstatic about it like oh i'm gonna be on Tori's channel again <laughs> wow so everyone joining in twitter yeah. and facebook uh and awesome. instagram i just this is uh this is tomasa here she oh she's trying to yeah she's trying to play <laughs> 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 I, uh, I, uh, I was training the other day, like a year ago, and I saw a black dog running through the, 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 the um, I, by the highway, the freeway. Oh, yeah, freeway, yeah. Actually. And she was so small, so cute, so helpless, so I fucking brought her. Is that her right there? Yeah, that's my... Uh, oh. Yeah, Let's that's, see her. Hello. Yeah. Like, oh, oh she cute. dropped her ball, but... Yeah, she's, she's like, oh, we're playing. No, we're not playing, but she's here. <laughs> That's one of the things I remember when I was riding around uh, Mexico City was... Lots of stray dogs. Lots of stray dogs. And that's not mm -hmm. uh, unique just to uh, Mexico either. I've seen that in other places as well, but mm -hmm. a lot of them chase you in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You got to like grab your water bottle and squirt them, you know? Like, huh. get back. Yeah, you, you, you see them like, and you got your water bottle like, okay. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. um, my my coach has been bitten like three times. Oh no! So he's particularly particularly paranoid with, with dogs, but <laughs> <laughs> that's great. And that's, that's pretty much now you have a now you have game, yeah now you have yeah. a quarantine uh, friend to hang out with. Yeah. So are you? Yeah, still, she's she's cool. Are you still getting out and uh, able to ride during everything that's going on? Uh, every two or three days i yeah. try to uh that's kind of 
some people say it's not recommended. Uh, we're actually like writing and uh, we're I, I, we're not trying to go on, on, on our own because uh, it's kind of, um, I don't know if you call it safe. Or yeah. we're, we're, I don't know. Uh, you have like a wing, a wing, a wing person, a wing man, wing woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To go with you yeah, just so, in case so, something happens. Yeah, just happens. in case. Uh, uh, we're at most if we're 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 riding like mostly four, and we're going to the same two highways. Yeah. Just uh, to see if the forest is still there. It is still there because, but, I mean, it's just like a two-hour ride back and forth. Uh huh. And uh, pretty much of it, I'm kind of not getting into the rotor thing because I don't have the as a I have a three wheel a uh, three the the free rotor yeah and it's kind of boring um, at the house you just get on the on the on the trainer in the the roller yeah I have a trainer but maybe just short times so or just a longer ride every now and then but yeah. it's really really sporadic right by now oh yeah it's mm-hmm. it's uh, hard it's hard to get out. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And then you're you're still keeping busy at work, right? And you're yeah. Do, and you're doing an, uh, industrial design. <laughs> oh, Industri- I, I do industrial design for a retail agency. Yeah. But I, I, yesterday I got this uh, this message that I am temporarily on vacation for this week. Oh. So I have like, just I got into the webinar thing I had this morning, and yeah. then I. I have first. plenty of time to fix my walls because Tomasa has been eating in eating them. Oh no! Um, yeah, Tomasa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tomasa. There's a song. It's uh, it's kind of politically inappropriate, but yeah. there's this Mexican song of of this rock band that trying to make a cumbia, and it sings that uh, the guy is in love with uh, uh, what he calls Negra Tomasa. <laughs> the black lady Tomasa. Oh. And, uh, so when I pick stop her I, yeah. I, I thought it was hella funny and yesterday i realized it was quite inappropriate but she has been with that name for a, for a whole year and oh i, I realized uh because uh the doorman at, uh, in my building the the he, he his 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 name is tomas so it's like oh your dog is so cute how is uh, what's her name uh, tomasa oh, i'm <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's like it's just like you <laughs> That's okay. That's just a it's a female version of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's not so common, but I apologize if someone gets accidentally knocked over with it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was uh, about to tell you that uh, before Tomas interrupted uh, how it crosses the, the the threshold between being uh, just commuting around and pulling around and everything, and serious racing. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, firstly because I got into like, you, you get to meet people at the at the traffic light when it's uh, like oh we're going to an alligator and everything so I began into alligator racing. Mm-hmm. I am not good at it, but we were three five racing. It's like you managed to accidentally be good at it, and uh, then we had uh, the on 2014 2015 we had like small. A, a small attempt to do uh, to organize criteriums here in Mexico, and uh, I, between Alicat racing and some uh, what was firstly like this grudge between girls, female riders. Yeah. Like I'm gonna win her, and uh, it was it was dumb, but uh, it was, was it uh, friendly, uh, like slightly friendly. It was. It wasn't at the very beginning, at least not for me. <laughs> I was like really, I was really having, having a hard time. But then we realized that the, that that rivalry was quite stupid. Now we're friends, mm. and uh, and and I actually admire them. But it was like I'm, uh, when you have to, you know, you get into work hard enough to get uh, to make the uh, your to to make the people you admire your rivals. Yeah. So I got into that seriously, and I realized that I actually admired them a lot. I still admire them a lot because they got me into this, even though they didn't continue. And the there was this crit in 2014 at the very end of 2014, which is a very dramatic event because I have uh, this accident, terribly accidentally uh, crash while warming up. Oh no! Black man. Yeah. It was terrible. Like I, I just 
it was so bad, but it got me with the necessary adrenaline to keep up the for the rest of the day. Oh. And um, I was uh, trying to get uh, to get my best result. So I just cleared the girl that I thought that was dangerous to ride around her. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, I was then I realized I was just like lingering on second place uh, with the girl in first place, like quite far away because she has these excellent riding skills. And I was like just trying to close the gap uh, with her. Yeah, but I was. I was hurt already. I had uh, this terrible scar, uh, uh, just fresh, all. Were you just my bleeding everywhere? You were kind of a no? little bloody. No, it was. It wasn't that bloody, but it's like road rash. But it was oh, huge road rash. Yeah. All my left leg was road rash. Wow. There's this. Uh, there, there's uh, there, there's a video about it, and <laughs> it's it was. So it got, it got like. It's, yeah, especially heroic because it was it, it looked it didn't look nice yeah and um and my partner my my friend plumas which was uh, actually in first place uh she was riding so confidently a uh, little bit overconfidently but that what that's that uh, at the at the very uh, the last turn uh, i just had like a really I just got the the feeling about cornering with the fix the, with the fix your bike, and I made it perfectly. And I just took the whole impulse and won the race for half a wheel because Plumas got confident. Wow! It was an accident. Wow! <laughs> and, so that's the reason. That, uh, another friend told me months later, like you should try doing this like a little bit more seriously. Uh, yeah. Like, have you ever heard of a thing called wow. Red Hood Crit? And I was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So months after, I got. Crazy and <laughs> and uh, I bought the airline ticket, got into Rathcliff Creek. Uh, a, a very good friend of mine uh, in Brooklyn, yeah. So in, in Brooklyn, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, she instead of saying like, "Dude, you're working. Uh, you you just change your, your uh, uh, you just change your job. Uh, you should kind of try to be like a competent adult and not lose it." She told me like, "Oh, good. I got I have a good friend over there, so we can stay at his place, and I'm coming with you." And we did, and that's how the the whole thing for racing started. So after Red Hook, I realized that I had tons of things to learn. I still have tons of things to learn, but I got like I tried to got into training, and now I'm racing as uh, as a domestic for a national team, well, a, a national and regional team. But I I just do domestic uh, labors because it's the funnest thing to do. So, and, you, so <laughs> for those of the, the people at home who don't know what a domis, domestique is, can you explain it a little bit to them? Uh, in in Spanish, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say that like uh, it's a it's a wordplay. It's co what we can call in Mexico un técnico IBM. IBM y trae. Go and do. Go and bring. Go and so it's the the person that uh, that that has to do like all the dairy work. Yeah, for like the, carry for the extra the, water, maybe ride a yeah. bike that's not your size because it's a teammate size in case they crash. Yeah, yeah, it. they they absolutely work for their teammates. That's yeah. what I. That's the reason I accepted to be in the team. I didn't want to be like the I'm I'm fast, but I'm not. I I, I started in this so so late yeah. that I don't have the I don't consider that to have the intelligence. I'm still learning. Yeah. The that race intelligence. Yeah. But uh, what I can do pretty pretty well is just. Have tons of stamina. I can, I don't know, close the gap with with, with a break, breakaway or uh, that thing. I totally and do basically, it. I, I, basically, you do that. You close the gap for the people who on the team who are like supposed to be winning. You do the work, uh -huh. close the gaps for them, so they save their the, energy. They get on your wheel and you pull them in, right? Yeah, Just yeah. trying to explain everyone I, back at home. Yeah, who, yeah, I, who I might I, not I, understand. I, I, I pretty much work for everyone. Uh, for, I know. I if if, if we I I, I I am an excellent distractor. I have the best time <laughs> distracting it, just <laughs> bombing the the race. Uh, I, that's what I enjoy the best. Yeah. I, I realized trying to win it it was too stressful for me. So and 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 after last year, I I, I also came into reality that this is my hobby. Yeah. So the this thing I, I I'm I'm uh, and if I do event production for for my for that, that for, for for a living. It was like really weird that my hobby stressed me more than my life job. Yeah. So I just 
put my stress like eight, eight bars down and just went with the flow, uh, took the domestic role in the, in the, in the team. And it's the best thing. It's uh, I have the best time, like, and, and just trying to get younger athletes to, to go further. It's just, uh, I mean, I have nothing to, to fight in a national championship. That's not that I, if I, there's a reason to win, I won't take it, but, uh, probably there's no good, no, no reason. Not what I, what I train for is to be like, good enough in Redford Crit, which no one else here is trying to do. So it works. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And at the mm -hmm. same time, you're not stressing yourself out uh, yeah. on trying to yeah, win I, I, and, and like having a hard time sleeping because you're like, oh, I need to be training or eating better or whatever. Because you're yeah. looking at it more like kind of fun because you do have a career and you got your own thing going. And then on top of that, uh, you are building and growing uh, with the intelligence side of, of racing. So maybe, mm -hmm. you know, a couple more seasons you can, who knows? I can try to do, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I How long do you think you're going to do this? Into account that, sorry? How long do you think you're going you're gonna to keep doing it? I don't know. I, it's, uh, I've been saying for a couple of years that, I, it, uh, that it's going to be over by the end of the season and I haven't. So I think it's maybe a couple of years more. I, I don't know. Like no, maybe. What I do know is that as soon as I quit fixed gear racing, which I won't expect to happen like in the next maybe three years, I'm gonna switch into time trial, which it's, it's something that I also thought uh, we found out that uh, it's not. I'm not that bad in time trialing also. You're small. So you're small, strong. Yeah. You're small and strong. <laughs> and uh, and I got this like uh, tons of focus and. Uh, I'm not that bad. Uh, it's, it's so uh, I just need the proper bike, which, which, which is the reason I'm just like, oh, later. Yeah. I'm, I'm now all, all of my attention is into fixed gear racing and road racing just for training yeah. purposes. That's great. You are on a professional, a national professional team for yeah. road yeah, racing. Yeah, it's, well, it's, yeah it's, a, it's a professional team, but it's just national. Got it. Because, you know, yeah, there's a, the intercontinental thing and, uh, and uh, the, I'm not at, the, at that level, but I can, I, I'm fast enough, yeah. but, but I'm not the best. I'm really far away from being the best, but I mean, uh, as long as I can make racing fun. Uh, That's I'm what's in. important. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. My one, my, I enjoy watching, I enjoy everything about the racing, uh, like the psychology, um, mm -hmm. and like the, you know, the effort and the self selflessness of like having to train and just work yourself to some extreme level. But I am not into those people at, at a certain point, it seems like you lose the fun. And I think mm -hmm. it's cool that you're still, you know, you're still having fun. That's the part that I like. It sounds like you're, you're happy with doing the work for these people. And that's, I think you found the sweet spot. Um, yeah, in the yeah, road racing that's... anyways, because I've never been a fan of the road racing scene as much because it seems so, at least in the men's field, it's always like, like everyone's, it's a little too, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's too aggressive. And, yeah. uh, uh, the, like, the you're first in spandex, thing, uh, man, chill. <laughs> Just chill out. <laughs> Actually, yeah. But in, for female racing, uh, it was uh, at least a couple of years ago, it was like, oh, uh, she's so beautiful, and she's uh, she looks amazing in spandex, and 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 the race began even before getting into the warm up. Wow. So it was so stressful. It was like uh, it, it, between uh, this. It, it is not this glam show that Red Could Crit is. Yeah, it is just uh, this stress that uh, it was absurd. And I uh, in this couple of years, I re uh, I realized that. The, the ladies I raised with have come into notion that this was happening and it wasn't our fault either. Like, um, I, uh, like hearing these comments that it, it doesn't matter how fast you are, as long as you look on t good on top of the bike, it was, it was ridiculous. It, it still oh, happened, but yeah. Uh, fortunately we all got into account that that was a thing. And now racing has become a lot, uh, like this, closer circle when we don't have any trouble expressing admiration or just this really nice hype. It's, it has taken a while, but 
we're we're getting into it and it's better i i it's it's also a, a reason to not drop it it was it's like there was unnecessary stress like you can just crash and get really pretty hard with it so yeah. the, that 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 was other stress was like unnecessary so yeah. And uh, we are all working together to not bring it into the race. Yeah. That was something, uh, yeah. something that's been um, changing a lot for the good for, uh, for mm -hmm. women and uh, WTF riders, women trans femme uh, riders. Yeah. I've always, uh, coming from the West Coast, uh, it's been a little more sensitive in California. So then when mm -hmm. I came to the East Coast, I had to explain to people what that even meant, like WTF. Uh -huh. and, and, and you see like the roots of cycling coming from Europe. You still see like brands coming out of Italy kind of, uh, I don't know how to say it properly without sounding dumb, but uh, sexualizing a woman on a bike, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And not taking yeah, them as yeah, a yeah. serious, like uh, just as a person. And someone who's an athlete instead of, you know, they're just like, oh, she looks good on a bike. No, you guys are out there racing. Like, it's the same thing. And then the whole, like, prize, uh, uh, the prize pools being less for women is just, it's just not, that's not cool. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a, that, but that's things, also are, a, things are changing. A thing. Slowly. Yeah. Yeah, slowly changing. Yeah. So. yeah, we're more critical to it. So mm -hmm. we're not buying anymore this uh instagram shot of this perfect model that has this perfect body it's and just like is, leaning over uh, a bike <laughs> yeah perfectly with perfect makeup per perfect hair perfect fit skin suit on a mountain bike with road shoes like yeah. <laughs> we're critical enough to know that that's not real that yeah. we're we're in, 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 in it for more for more real cyclists for yeah. real people doing the thing so yeah. there's a balance but I mean, yeah, we're not buying like um, female riders by their bot, but but by their capabilities, and it's better because sport has been it, it's a lot more rough to compete with real athletes. Yeah. So it's and um, I, sometimes I, 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 I at first I thought that we were racing not to get tired, but now we're putting all into it. Hey, I'm um, my right sorry. I can't help but ask, what happened to your right hand? With what? what? Your right hand. Your ah, hand. I'm it's sorry. All, it's bandaged uh, up. I, I think I, I didn't uh, sleep quite well. It's been hurting, so I just got into... Oh, you this, just... Uh, it's just the... CBD? <laughs> yeah, it's... Is really, it? Oh. The, it's, not, it's nothing, actually. It's just uh, been a couple of days with quite a lot of pain. And yesterday uh, we took the, the descent from Majusco and it's quite bumpy and everything. So it's just, I'm wearing the bandage for a couple of days just to, yeah, it's helping. Okay. Me. We're just hey. making sure a couple of people asked in the, uh, in the chat. Ah, okay. No, no, no worries. <laughs> uh, everything's fine. Nothing has happened to just, uh, I don't know why it's like, uh, since I got this terrible accident, um, the, uh, the one, uh, the uh, uh, unfriendly commenters in YouTube said, like, well, I hope you get run over, which actually happened before the, the video. You pointed uh, it my out. Right, like, <laughs> the right, my right hand has, has been, like, quite well, but uh, it's, I'm just going to take it off, like, in maybe half an hour or ah, anything. Okay. <laughs> um, so you talked a lot about road, road racing, um, and you also mentioned you race track bikes. Um, so is that... Is that like you, obviously you told the, you told the alley cat story, how you won and then you got into cycling and then the red hook. But like you said, you still race professionally. Like, are you racing in the velodrome? Like what is, what is the track bike racing for you right now? Uh, I really hope that uh, there's a thing with the velodrome. We, Mexico city has four velodromes, but <laughs> I, didn't know, I know, but four. there's no way we can use any of them. One of them is kind of technically falling apart. And it's way up north to the, uh, uh, at the at the north north of the city, so it's not nearby. It's maybe fifteen kilometers, like ten miles away from here. Mm. Uh, maybe it's. Um, I think it might be something like Piscina. Okay. That Piscina, Belgium. yeah, it's like kind of mm. just. Yeah, it's outside. also in the suburbs, but. It's, okay. But it's like, 
uh, out of maintenance and uh, I haven't got, got into there, but there's this, uh, the other two bedrooms are like into the Olympic standards right now. So if you go and, hey, I want to ride, there is a, uh, there's a huge no on the door for you. Uh, I rode one of them in 2018 for the Pan American Master Championship, uh, which was really fun. It was an accident that I got into there, but I won. <laughs> I tons love of it. Things there. It's always an accident. Yeah, it's it's like, great. It was an accident. I wasn't planning to race, but yeah. I, I bumped into this um, good Samaritan that that told me like uh, like I was in good level for trying to race it. Yeah. And uh, a, f a friend introduced me to, to this guy and he gave me like, if I give you half of the money you need, will oh. you do it? Oh, yeah, I'm totally in. So I had to buy, get, get the, the, the national team uniform, this green mm -hmm. nice uniform that, sa that says Mexico all over it, which is my favorite uniform. And I don't find the occasion to wear it, wear it again. Like uh, there's no, it's such a cool uniform, but I, it's not like I'm going for what, where are you going to use it? Like for training? You it's, got to keep it, right? No. <laughs> yeah, I have it. It's, it's, you gotta hang I, it I up. Love that you gotta uniform. hang it up. Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta show it's it. It's a personal <laughs> trophy. It, yeah. Yeah. So the uniform, the, 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 the rider license, uh, mm -hmm. the UCI, uh, 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 approval to race. Which it's also a hundred bucks, and the, the and the event inscription that was also a hundred bucks. So mm -hmm. I, he gave me half of the money. I got a like I pushed over. Uh, the, I shoved my paperwork and everything to get into into the championship, and uh, yeah, and that was the time I could ride that velodrome, the the, the velodrome in the Senar, which is, uh, wood uh, the uh, wood track. 250 meters quite nice oh, okay. the best track i've ridden in besides bigorelli velodrome <laughs> but i mean bigorelli velodrome is such uh, it's something from uh, from another planet and uh, this track is really nice the other one is the the comité olimpico which is closed for regular people like us mm -hmm. and there's uh, uh, the the Agustin Melgar Velodrome, this world famous velodrome where Eddie Merckx broke the Howard record in 1970 something. I uh, don't remember the, the exact date, wow. but now it is like um, it's that velodrome is held hostage by the uh, by the council administration of the of the city. So it's used probably they they rent it and now it's a fucking uh soccer course oh and that's the nicest uh, one that's the nicest village uh it's it, it it's not the nicest one because it's uh 300 um 333 meter track mm. but uh it's it's uh it's not wood anymore it's concrete but it would be like the public velodrome and then you have to fight for space between rentals of the central the infield Got it. That's mostly used for uh, as a training field for football, soccer. It doesn't matter. Like the, the four people come to pay the rent for it instead of ten cyclists for rent. For rent, the the administration is taking it. It's moving it for the money. It's it's really sad to see that happen. But uh, we tried to do something about it, but I, I, it took us nowhere. Yeah. So, velodrome racing is pretty much this uh, out of the of the question i do a lot of circuits uh, and, and, uh the the mexico city's autodrome has been it's open for cyclists every day well now not now for the actually now uh, they're uh, building a temporary hospital for the for the pandemic thing yeah and but uh, elsewhere in normal conditions the 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 track is open for for cyclists for runners for people that do physical exercise and i train a lot on there I, that's where i do all the technical stuff and there are a month there's a monthly race there oh, okay. different formats yeah uh, point race uh we're taking the whole the, the whole track or just a part of it so time trialing and just, it's like the best scenario for, for training. Yeah. And just having like a, a temporary 
race, well, uh, uh, not to marry, but a periodic race to work for. So that's uh, that's where I I train the most. I, that's what I'm really good at. And there's also uh, small tracks, uh, well, s small circuits around. Uh, we try to go, but I find them pretty boring because you know, do, do we have this section of the of the highway and we go straight? You turn straight. It's really boring. And yeah. you do that for maybe three hours, like 80 kilometers, or I don't know. Last the, the the last one I I, I got into was I, I got fifth place. It was eight, 80 kilometers, one p.m. in the sun in Cuernavaca. But I I, I, I it was better than I expected. <laughs> but that, that's what I do. I don't do stage racing or long uh, like the fun though kind of racing. Yeah. Um, I. I I can stay around, but I, I'm I don't consider myself competitive there. I'm just into circuit racing. That's Got my it. my big specialty. What about what about alley cats? Are you still racing your bike on the streets? I don't race it. I love alley cats. I, yeah. and every every time I see that someone is trying to make an alley cat, I just just drop a line like, "Hey, I'm I'm all in for checkpointing." Ah, uh, yeah, you want to support. I, I, yeah, I, I'm not racing anymore, but uh, checkpointing, uh, I'm yeah. so in. Uh, a couple of beers at checkpoint. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> a couple of beers yes, at yes, checkpoint. Yes, yes, yes. A couple of many beers in, yeah. in my while checkpointing. Uh, I'm so into it. I, I, I still ride my fixed gear bike for uh, pretty much everything, mm -hmm. but everything that's not going up to, up to mountain i hate this i really hate descending on the fixed gear bike yeah but yeah because you you yeah, ride elsewhere. road bikes you know <laughs> yeah 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 i know that with the confidence of uh, and people in mexico city are really unpredictable drivers yeah they are but the stop I, signs I, and the stoplights they're they're just a suggestion <laughs> yeah 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 traffic lights is like just like for friendly conviv uh, convivence issues, but uh, it's not absolute. So, but yeah. I found that out that in Bogota uh, things are way different. So I, I never felt that need to uh, need to be careful sensation in, uh, in Mexico City the, the way I felt it in Bogota. Like, okay, this is for real. I can get <laughs> killed here. <laughs> yeah, holy moly! So, I've never yeah, ridden. I haven't ridden in Bogota. It, I've been. You been, should. I yeah. mean, it's it's a beautiful city. I loved it, and they have like special uh, bike lanes, so you can ride around this uh, around the whole city. So if you ride in the street, like the the way we ride in New York or in Mexico City, because uh, that's what streets are for. The the drivers are like, oh, you have your bike lane, so they feel like they can shove you out of the oh, of the street. They can just like lean. That's what they think. Yeah. So so you need to be extra careful because they actually they they they, they actually feel that you don't belong there. Yeah. But do you have this, the infrastructure to safely ride everywhere? It's longer and everything, but it's you can do it safely. That's really so. Nice. That's what happens in Bogota. Well, that's what I I, I learned there. I'm yeah. not. I'm, or that I've been there for a small period of time, so I'm not sure if that's the reality. So, how many times have you um, came out to uh, New York to race? Was it just that one time you came to Red Hook, or did no. you come multiple times? Uh, I've been maybe for four or five times, four nice. times probably. And then I was there for a monster track, but I guess I just got tragically lost, <laughs> as predicted. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I studied the whole network of streets in Manhattan, but yeah. then the, the, all the streets like they don't disappear in South Manhattan. They just got into this weird uh, knot thing. Yeah, and I got lost there. Yeah, that so happens. Was, yeah, yeah. I should try again, monster track. Yeah, just for just for fun. Uh, but the only it's really the only way to win monster track. Uh, from being out of town is you just have to follow someone else unfortunately mm -hmm. no one else has really done it um without following somebody and you know yeah Sofa was i the lost first teams well town. that that day but uh, but yeah it's i just made a bad decision and like yeah. uh, the, it, the 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 
the road in, inside the park split it in two and I took the left mm. side and the right side was the ramp and the left side was just this chunky stairway that I had to just oh, no. get off the bike and uh, I, I lost everyone. It Dang. was so good. Yeah. Like a rookie thing, but yeah. Yeah. I, I also think that Mexico City has everything to ha- to to do an, uh, to own an alicate the way Monster Track for sure uh, ref- is. But uh, we have we we are, haven't been that good organizing ourselves. So the, the terremoto guys had had the best thing. The, the alicate of the terremoto guys was really the good. alicate in Mexico yeah. City. Yeah. yeah, those guys aren't throwing uh, it anymore. Terremoto? No, they're. I, I think they're. they're I, I would like to say that they're in a, on a on a voluntary vacation. Uh. But I hope they. They get back together uh, at least for they they sometimes get back together to organize things. They they're not into racing anymore, but they act they're, they're the actual scene. Well, the, the scene was built by them yeah. in Mexico City. So I, I really really hope to see some of them back, at least for the Alicat. And they have this um, Mexico City has two rings that just you can go around the city. It's a uh, sort of a highway, but it's free. Mm. Uh, it's like a fast lane thing, and uh, they have one in the inner ring of the city, which is the uh, we call it the Cuatro Por Dias, the four times ten. It's a relay race, mm. ten kilometers for prep for persons Saturday and like afternoon night, just Saturday evening. In an hour, it's uh, it's my favorite race. How often do they hold? Just it? between they ha- the. How often do they hmm? have they held it that race? Uh, maybe five or six years. Last year we didn't have but uh, the race, but uh, I mean they, it's by November, uh, October, November. Okay. It's my favorite race. Just uh, ten uh, uh, ten kilometers time time trial sprint mm-hmm. on your bike between traffic. Yeah. Time trial, time, time trial trialing with traffic. Yeah, with, with traffic. So uh, and, and and traffic lights and everything. So it's it's the best race ever. Like it's the most, the, the funniest race I ever uh, ever done. Yeah. So it's I, I really hope to see it back again soon. As soon as uh, the world settles back into whatever groove we settled into, maybe we can. Uh, mm-hmm. You can set that up. Have you have you thrown? Some people want to know if you've ever thrown any uh, races yourself, like hosted or thrown or alley cats I or ha- races. I haven't, but uh, I I really want to do it. Like I haven't found the time. I I have tons of, tons of ideas. Like I I tried to get into like making to to make like a training group and everything, like yeah. a small training camp. But I um. I uh, I don't have the the knowledge to train people, so it was doing some alliances and it didn't work out be- mostly because we don't have like the the time to, uh, to do the follow up. But I might try to throw an alicat just for fun. Yeah. Or, or I I don't know if uh, I, I'm I'm so willing into helping the terremoto guys uh, to organize again the 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 relay race because. Uh, we, we can try to do it or, or, or anything, but it's their race. So it's just that respect, like, it's your race. I can help you. I want to help yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, But just having the, them back into it as soon as they decide they, they want to do it, yeah. actually. Mm-hmm. Those guys, um, yeah. they, a lot of those guys, they run a bike shop, yeah? hmm yeah. yeah, they have... Uh, uh, look, See, most of them own a workshop, a bike shop. Yeah. I think I, I was there last time I was in Mexico City, which mm-hmm. is a great segue into, uh, I thought uh, I would share the, it's kind of like the rough cut video of you and I riding mm-hmm. through uh, Mexico City and cool, you yeah. kind of just, uh, you know, talk, we can, we can talk together um, over the video mm-hmm. and uh, set that up. How's that sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So yeah. let yeah, me just, yeah. I'm going to switch cameras real quick. Um, so mm-hmm. if you need a sec to take a break or something, uh, you can do that now. And then I just uh, need to refill my cup. Yeah, do your thing. Cup. 
So yeah, I'm just gonna yeah, go ahead. Get my setup because I I'm gonna need coffee for that. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So. Uh, All right. So we got um. <clears throat> we're gonna set up this video real quick with Anna. I'm gonna share my uh, screen with her, and we're gonna play. Um, we are gonna play. There it is. Yes. Uh, the hotline, or hotline, it's more of a, uh, it's a morning routine. Trek bikes in Mexico City. And she's going to do, she talks a little bit on the video, so um, she's going to do a little bit of um, talking. We'll both discuss what's going on while it's happening, so. Uh, what is going on here? Hmm. Also, I'm running into issues with my, um, <laughs> all my new little scenes. Sorry about this, everybody. All right. All right, do I still have you guys here? I think I do. All right. <laughs> I reset the uh, a little bit of that, and we got Anna here. I'm going to uh, switch video into this screen here, and we're gonna go ahead and Anna, we can hear you now. Okay, I'm here. Yeah, so. So we go. I'm gonna turn the volume down the, slightly, the, uh, so they can hear the us. City center after the update yeah. ends, we'll get to the Garibaldi spot. Yeah. Then we'll see if we. So I, I remember this. We, you want to shoot something else. Uh, yeah. We just met up and I was setting up the camera yeah, and I was yeah. like, tell me about your bike. Uh, is your bike still set up? Your track bike still set up like this? Yeah, I just changed the wheel set, but pretty much everything's not, uh, it's the same. I, I lost three bolts last time. Oh, no. But yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's. it's I, I didn't realize I, I did not two volts uh, I had lost, but uh, yeah, that's sure? pretty much my bike. It's T -Y -O. still the bike, and um, we were talking about. Uh, I, I asked you how rude do you want to go? Because I had like all my chain ring uh, set on my on, on my hip bag. Like, uh, if you want to ride fast, I can set up my forty six some forty nine something. But uh, we uh, we were riding that day with my lightest ratio of forty six eighteen. Yeah. For just a light spin, strolling, uh, maybe a climbing, and yeah, you were like, we let's were... take a chill. And I had just ridden uh, with Safa, and I was like, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> uh, also, because yeah. I was on a, I was on a gravel bike with like forty five C, like big fat tires, and so my bike was a little slow, and I had really wide bars. So I was like, I was like, yeah, I would love to see Mexico City. I thought this was cute okay. right here. Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> oh yeah! It's so good. Um, yeah, and that uh, and that vicinity is like Colonia Roma, which you know it's hipster center of Mexico City, and, uh, and we get into that. Yes, and I had no idea where you were taking me. <laughs> I, I actually didn't. I just like uh, what you guys say. It's comp composing by ear. Like I just uh, it, it it could have kept been longer, but I I just had trouble with my. Uh, my my cog just got loose at the very end of the uh, of our ride, so. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, but yeah, we, I was trying to hit the city center, maybe a, a bit of reforma, which is uh, uh, reforma. The, the reforma stroll, I uh, thought it would, it would have been nice to for it to be longer, but uh, Insurgentes had a different gameplay for uh, for us and my loose cog. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, it, it, would, it would have been like truly breakless riding. Yeah. yeah, no, totally. Yeah, no way to stop. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember this day being, I guess it's always really hot over there uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in Mexico, Mexico City area. But it was, I remember just being pretty hot. You can tell you're wearing shorts and, and a tank top and um, it reminds me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It reminds me of the conversation we had yesterday where you were saying somebody was telling you about 
Oh, did you, you should try athletic clothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, oh, have you ever heard that there is cycling specific clothing? Like, yeah, I, pretty much I kind of know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> yeah. I do train a lot. And yeah, that, that's how uh, I'm. Well, that's not my outfit for going to work. So every time that the the, the city is like the, the hot enough, it's nice to ride around in shirts. Definitely. Uh, it's also a, it's also a thing that uh, it's come to my notice that it, I get lesser comments while riding around dressed like that, which oh. I totally appreciate it because it's like. You know, people, uh, guys feel entitled to mm, let you know what they think about how you look, which it's not something I think in the morning while I dress up. Yeah, you're doing. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm gonna dress this way to no. So I, I really appreciate not listening to that comments anymore. Yeah, that much. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Understand. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> you know what's interesting about Mexico City when I was there? I so I was wearing pants or I was wearing shorts as well. And nobody mm -hmm. wears, and I think this is like uh, Central and C South America, no one wears shorts <laughs> unless they're playing basketball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, or, or unless it's the, like the, you're fully into the weekend. Uh, I, I think it's cultural. Yeah. Because the, the climate is so for wearing shorts. Like. It's perfect for, for shorts. And when I, when I got there, uh, I forgot who One told One thing me. about the... the, the go, go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, uh, it's just oh. kind of everything froze for a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. One of the things that uh, I remember is like, it was either, it was soft. Someone told me they were like, yeah, they, everyone knows you're American right away or you're not from here because you're wearing shorts. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? And then you're wearing shorts. Yeah. yeah. And then I looked around and I was like, oh my God, nobody wears. Everyone wears, uh, but uh, it happens even though in also in cities like in Central America or yeah. In, in 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 if you go to the beach in Mexico, it, everyone's wearing a, a long a long slip pants. So I think it's cultural. Yeah, I think it is. Because yeah, it's so com comfortable to be around in shorts. And uh, I mean, we have a uh, this uh, the, the climate in the spring and summer is really something to to that was a spot I got run over. to be wearing like shorts yeah. and everything. Like no, there's no need. Like if for for quarantine, I haven't wore pants for maybe twice in four weeks. Got it. The best <laughs> so earlier in the video, you pointed out you were like, "That's where I got ran over." Um, you want to tell oh, us yeah. a little yeah, bit yeah, about yeah. that? Uh, oh, you that hit? day, uh, I, 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 I uh, that day in the morning, I did. Uh, there's uh, this mountain. We call Dinamos, uh, which is uh, to the south west of the city, and uh, we, I did it twice for the first time, which I thought it was pointless because it's, it's just a seven kilometer to summit, go down seven kilometers again, pointless. But I did it that morning, and then I got a phone call that I had a, 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 a like a, a call with a client in, uh, in, and they were getting together in Tlatelolco to. To do the to do the call thing, and Tlatelolco is the where we actually turned over, and um, just time. later in the video. So I I took uh, I central had the call. Uh, I took that route, had the call, and then in the city center, the um, you can take. Uh, I I used to live near the Tlalpan Corredor, mm. so I decided to. Uh, Tlalpan is a fast, uh, a fast, uh, like a fast way. There's no, no, it's not like that friendly for cyclists. So I decided that I had to chill the fuck down and just, I had ridden a lot that morning and it was like a hectic morning. I decided to take the, the, the oh, supposedly the right and the left lane are for, uh, the, uh, for the electrical bus. And it's to be shared with bikes, so I decided to take the to to go back home through the electrical train, uh, the, the 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 special lane. Yeah. And to in order to not 
uh, just chilling down, no? just taking things a little bit calmer. And um, a fucking lady in a rush invaded the, the lane just to uh, skip three cars. Uh, she ran me over. Oh, no. Well, I, so it's, I, it's like uh, I, I don't like slow riding because uh, every time I say I'm going to take things slow, something terribly ha terrible happens. That was the last thing. Uh, it's, it was it, it was preposterous. Like I was like, ah. yeah. On the, uh, she was riding against the road. Uh, it, it was terrible, and, and I was like, man, I, I didn't want to take a salad platform because it was like I, I was trying to actually just uh, take a like a slow spin home. Yeah, and. I failed. <laughs> it didn't work out. Oh, no. um, my bike got, uh, it, it ran my bike, it was broken. And, uh, and, and afterwards, what's so frustrating about it, uh, fortunately, I didn't get like a, a major uh, injuries, but what's so frustrating about it was the, the later, just getting into the into the police station trying to get the lady to pay she didn't pay anything she uh, i don't know if, if she bribed or uh, or the just uh, our legal system is so fucked up that uh, i had no reason to be there like it, 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 it make they they were trying to make everything seem that it was my fault and the lady got away with it and uh, she didn't pay a thing. I got I got back with the terrible depression and just uh, a broken bike and uh, and, and you know, the collarbone thing for uh, three weeks and it Ouch. was terrible. So uh, that's the bad news about it. Uh, so I uh, ever since I don't try, I, I don't like slow spinning. <laughs> so I feel that you you kind of, you, maybe you get confident and are not aware of anything that's ha uh, everything that's happening around you. Hey. And that's where accidents happen. Yeah. So just being all 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 the time with your antennas, exactly. pointing everywhere, I, not I, trying to get killed. <laughs> exactly. I always mm -hmm. I try to um, share because uh, there's gray areas in cycling and and like running red lights and stuff. And I always try to bring up uh, living in New York City. It's kind of similar to Mexico City in the way that there's like gray areas like you can kind of mm -hmm. get away with running a light because that's the way the city functions but you need to uh be hyper aware of your surroundings it's more important to be aware than stop at a red light in my opinion because <laughs> you're on a bike yeah 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 just be aware and that's uh for you if, on, if you're on a bike if you're on on your feet walking like don't pull out your phone and cross the street like don't drive and pull out your phone like just be aware so yeah yeah I yeah agree. absolutely <laughs> Yeah, so it's like okay, yeah, it, it's it is probably not the best idea to run a to run a traffic light, but maybe that's what's gonna keep you alive. So I'm totally in into not getting killed. Yeah, um, I like being alive. I don't like to be in, to be run over, and that's that's pretty much how we 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 move around. I also have this sacred idea of not. Uh, Respecting the pedestrian, but sometimes while riding fixed yeah. fixed gear. Well, at that that time I was riding with, fast, with, with clips. So I was using SPD pedals. Yeah. But my SPD shoes got killed in Bogota um, while trying to avoid the car that went out of nowhere. So uh, now I, I ride like a fixed gear star without clips. <laughs> oh, you ride clipless? Yeah, I'm riding. I'm riding clipless in with, order with to with no straps. Oh, effectively, uh, no, no straps. No, I, <laughs> I don't remember. What, uh, I, 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 I move, uh, so I don't remember where I left the pedals. So I just uh, ride. Uh, but I, it, it's in a way to for me to actually slow down, yeah. and it has been working. So you just yeah, you just, just put your foot in the back tire, and zzz. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah I just uh, I, I just ride extra careful and uh, I I don't accelerate that much in the fixed gear bike if I'm riding clipless obviously exactly but um, but I, it is also a way to not uh, ride that fast 
Yeah. Just out. I um, some sometimes I ride my my track bike and I have kind of a big gear. I have it set up to like kind of train at the park, but sometimes I mm -hmm. ride it home or I ride it around town, and I have road pedals. I have look road pedals and I wear my sneakers with no clips and I ride it with a huge 5315 gearing and I just kind of slow pedal mm -hmm. around. It, I understand yeah, what I you mean by it. you can't you're not going to go that fast. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, since you uh, there's no human way you can stop it. Yeah, except against a wall or a car. Yeah, yeah then you don't get crazy. You don't accelerate. Exactly. So that's how I'm riding lately. Um, because I, if I use the road bike for everything, I just uh, ride that way. So it's not, there's no need, yeah. not at all, not every day. So people have a real and, a real problem with this part of the video because there were there were, a lot of people were saying, "Where's your lights?" And I just want to make it clear to everybody that yes, the tunnel was dark, but because of my camera settings, I, I made the tunnel stay dark. Like it would, it's not, it wasn't mm -hmm. as dark as it looked. So just it's over drama. <laughs> yeah, it's a little dramatic. It, it wasn't. Yeah, it, 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 there was not a moment which is which uh, it, it, that it looked that full black. It, it, it was pretty dark, though. Yeah. And in the middle of it, there was this uh, huge pool of water, which I didn't count on. That's why I kind of laugh in the middle of it. Yeah, because yeah. I got all splashed like, oh, oh fuck, you <laughs> this sprayed, wasn't in the, in the script. You sprayed <laughs> yeah. the camera. But, you can see the lens is, ca is there's water on it right now. <laughs> You're like a little blur mm -hmm. on the water drop. Mm -hmm. And before uh, and, and before uh, that, uh, that that sprint is quite nice. I think we hit like 42 kilometers per hour, but uh, which uh, with a 40, 46, 18, it was like having this sick cadence above uh, 120 RPMs. Yeah. So that's why I look like oh fuck 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 fuck. Yeah, and people love it. They're, it's they really were, fun. A lot of people respect uh, respect your cadence. That's uh, I heard. There's a few comments in here about people respecting your cadence. So, okay. Because you were spinning on this video. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do, I don't like yeah. to unclip well because it's uh it's just this control freak thing. But that's Tlatelolco. That's the place I had the meeting that the, that day. Ah, it's okay. this. Uh, yeah, so it, that I was coming home from there, which is a place I don't visit quite often. And Tlatelolco has this strange city vibe. Uh, it's during, in the '68. The, there was like a, um, a historical political repression that went on there. And so the local is a it's a, it's a it's a respected place in Mexico City. Got it. Uh, and there is also well, and uh, you know the 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 earthquake thing. It really shook us bad. And uh, um, Tlatelolco was one of the of the worst places uh, that that got the worst thing uh, on the eighty five. So it's it has this vibe that makes me it's it's kind of. You know, when you're curious, but at, at, the, at the same ratio, you want to stay away from it. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to, oh, what happened? I don't want to look. Yeah, it's yeah. that Tlatelolco, Tlatelolco makes me, uh, or causes that, me that feeling, like this morbid uh, approach okay. to it. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's a weird spot, but it's nice and... It's just this. In the seventies, it was the idea of uh, like a small city, this some like some apartment uh, spots in Brooklyn that are like huge and everything. It's something like that. It has its, its own theater, swimming pool, metro station inside of it, and it also has no uh, planning for parking spots. Oh, also, <laughs> so it's such a it's pretty complicated, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, at, at the center of it, there's this huge park, and and, and I almost ran that, that guy over, and I actually apologized to him. <laughs> yeah, and then, I apologize to everyone. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know you're you were very patient and very uh, very nice to people. I thought it was awesome yeah, when I was yeah. watching it back. I was like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, 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 I try to write that way. Like, I, I mean, I, I try not to run over questions, but yeah, sometimes I, I, I people are. I, I mean, I, I am constantly aware that we ride or we walk or we cross, but whatever we think, it's the safest place to do so. So yeah. that lane, for example, is supposed to be. We, you, we're not supposed to ride in it. That's the bus lane. Yeah, watching the pot. Yeah, the, the, the bus lane, but that bus in particular is like, uh, it's faster and it, it's, they're, they're instructed not to stop. In Bogota, they have the same system and they call it the borrador, the racer. If it finds you, it, it, it just knocks it you over. It erases you. So, <laughs> it, erases, it erases you. So oh. it, it, I have this, I, I'm gonna, uh, I have this video of running away from the, from one of those in Bogota in the night. I was riding clipless. So it's, it's really, really funny. And uh, so, but it is the safest place. There's another cyclist over there. There's another sort of people walking around. I've, I've seen people running around there. Yeah. And um, the, the, the other part, uh, the, 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 the regular lane, uh, it's just uh, full of potholes. And there's this huge like um, um, metal things in the middle of it. Uh, Cause uh, the metro like just runs below the street so it's just to keep it ventilated. And it's in the middle of the street. So riding with uh, those tires, um, and uh, I mean, you just can get yourself like stuck in the, in the, uh, the, los respiraderos, pues, uh, the, the potholes? <laughs> the, 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 those uh, openings for the metro to, yeah, yeah. It's or you can sleep with the metal play, plagues or and yeah. so it's just not safe. So we ride or we run or we cross for whatever we think it's safer to us. And yeah. that's something we uh, or or at least in Mexico City we we have been failing to observe. I I, I love the <laughs> the cardboard lady in the in the corner. That's a, that, that might be some political um, uh, uh, propaganda thing. Oh, that she's holding up? Yeah, there, there was a lady in the cardboard. <laughs> yeah, there was uh, that, that's some people the thing. Yeah, the, those registries, yeah. Holding cardboard up before. You really too. need to be like... Mm -hmm. Those metal registries are the ones that uh, I think make that part of the street really dangerous. Yeah. Another one. So that's why, uh, yeah, if there's no... Red bus. I'd rather ride the lane, and the, uh, and the lanes. It's like you don't have space to have three lanes, but they're drawn, so there are three lanes. There are like three lanes, but only room for two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it happens a lot. Supposedly, it's uh, to make people uh, drive slower because uh, you you have this sensation that the space is less. But uh, it's just uh, suppo uh, it doesn't work that way. People, if, if they can, they're gonna. Uh, Speed over all the way. Yeah. I now guess... that we don't have that much traffic, it, it's a lot more clearer. Oh, that's sorry. That's beautiful. A, uh, a lot of mm -hmm. people don't know, um, kind of the geographical area that Mexico City was was built upon. Um, it was actually built on a lake, old lake bed. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so it's. It is said that Mexico City is sinking, I think, uh, I don't know if 10 or 13 centimeters uh, per year. And there's the uh, there's parts which is more noticeable. Uh, Mexico City's cathedral is under, and Bellas Artes, it was, Bellas Artes was originally at, the, at street level. And it has sunk for, it, since the whole thing is made of marble, it, it has sunk um, a huge story high. To two meters and something, so yeah, uh, the city is kind of um, sinking. If if you live near a major street and a huge bus just goes through, you can feel it. Like the your your building may vibrate a little bit. Wow. So and we're used to it. Yeah. So that's why uh, we're so paranoid with the um, uh, that that thing about uh, earthquakes and everything. Like. It's it's a thing. It's a, and it's uh, that's something that haunts us all the yeah. time. 
we have the the seismic alarm uh, and, and tons of things around it the way you guys in new york are so careful with with fires the the strict uh, outside fire uh, staircase yeah that's the way we treat uh earthquakes in mexico city yeah it's it's a huge something we uh, we have periodic drills about getting out uh so it's it it has it uh, th that condition in the floor had forged our way to see the city definitely i'm sure it has a lot to do with the way the road gets destroyed too uh from mm -hmm. the ground constantly moving and shifting and then also oh. earthquakes um I grew up in the West Coast in the Bay Area, so I remember being in el like elementary school and doing earthquake drills. Like the alarm would go off, and yeah. you would go under your desk and put your head under your arms, and that was your protection. That's all you could really do. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's scary absolutely. Because like, they, they come, it happens out of nowhere. You know, there's no warning. Yeah, yeah, because earthquake. there's nothing. Yeah, you, and you, there's nothing to expect. Like, I haven't been in a. Um, oh. Uh, on a, on just this parenthesis, I don't use cy uh, cycling lanes. I defend them, but I don't use them because if someone else needs to use them, like, I don't know, people in wheelchairs or people that are uh, moving, uh, I know, big uh, the, the trolleys or anything. I mean, Reforma has a nice ass wide sidewalk and it's really, but elsewhere sidewalks are crappy. So yeah. If people need to use it, I'd rather move on the street. I, I also believe that if you're moving faster than the than the certain speed, um, it's not a good idea to be confined. So you know, or have some point to react. But I, that's why. So I, I know I got criticized for for my voluntary not using uh, the bike lane. No. That's why I don't. I, it, I'm not saying that it is right, but uh, I, 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 I also think that's safer. No, I don't want to run over that accidentally, uh, someone that accidentally goes down to the, or those guys that are like trying to learn to use a, 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 a public bike or anything. Exactly. Or just getting to order. So, I, I guess I'm not planning to, planning to stop. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. Um, that's some of the reasons me and there's a couple other people like, uh, you know, Cooper, Cooper Ray. Mm -hmm. We have talks about bike lanes all the time in New York, and that's one of the pro that's one of the things. Like bike lanes are good to a certain speed, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Like it's sketchy, and they're really you're necessary. You're yeah, yeah, but and if, you're stuck. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they're really necessary for people that are. I mean, you can. I, I love to see uh, families using the yeah. cycling lane. Yeah, me too. I but like if to see I'm new trying people, to new people on there, you know what I mean. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at, at the very beginning, I uh, you you can get like you, you rent a public bike and use a bike lane to move around, and then it doesn't feel that that insane to ride uh, to, through the rest of the city. So that's why bike lanes are necessary. But if if, if a whole family is using the bike lane and I'm trying to speed all, all, all my way over them, that's not a good idea. It's not prudent. So uh, I just step out of it. That's yeah. how it should work, and it should, we should be tolerant with it. Uh, then, then I just try, I, I was trying to make over the the next steps of the route, which uh, it, we had to change because the flying cog thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember um, being in Mexico City for my first time with my bike, and I was just like, man. I don't like know how I would uh, even get around this place if I didn't have a bike. And, and, and this was one of the trips that really solidified the, the, the idea for me that, like, I don't want to go anywhere without a bike, yeah, travel anywhere yeah. without a bike. Like, South even if I'm only there for a week, I want to at least have access to a bike. It doesn't mean I need to bring my yeah. bike, but I need to have a bike because you just get to the feel and the vibe of the city way better. You, you get to know the city, the city differently. I had the opportunity of uh, being in London and in Paris uh, before riding bikes and then and riding them around. And uh, definitely, it's better to ride around. It's I used to say that there is no way you can get to know a city if you don't walk around it, but biking it is way better. 
Yeah, it's a little bit of a faster speed. And, mm -hmm. and um, you get to more efficient. You can do tons of different things, more yeah. time. It's... Yeah. And you meet people to that show you around. Yeah, there's a community around it. There's not really much of a walking community. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're walking too? Let's go walk together. No, it's like. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, mostly because uh, probably in Mexico City, people rarely stay on the same neighborhood. Unless you're staying in Polanco, Roma, Condesa, which uh, we're totally fed up of them. Yeah. Um, that it's like just... Uh, I remember just, going there and you, you it was so expensive. You just move from one neighborhood to another. Yeah. Sorry? It was so expensive. We went there like one one night or two nights. With I went with Eric and I was like, man, this place... The drinks were expensive. The food was expensive. I was like, we're back in New York City. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's absurd to have so, so, so expensive places. Yeah. I mean, if you go out, uh, walk a couple of blocks away of the neighborhood, you can find the same thing like yeah. for half the price. So it's pointless. And that, uh, on that part, I, I really hit a bad pothole. It was painful. <laughs> yeah, you were like, ow. <laughs> that was ouch. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a part coming up where there's a cop and he's like, hey, scoot over to the right. Come to the right. Oh, and, yeah. And, and you were like, no, no, I won't. <laughs> no, this is my lane. I, I over there. It. Yeah, the, on the roundabout. Uh, like, he was like, uh, he was, uh, he told me to ride uh, just uh, through the side. Uh, he says, uh, uh, what he says is, oh, uh, is. Uh, por la orilla. The, just, just go to the edge of the of, of the driveway, and I was like, man, I, I just uh, I, like no, I I I I, I, I answer in a quite confident mode, like no, brother, this is my lane. That's yeah. what I say, like, and I, I, I and and my bike mechanic always uh, every time he sees me, he 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 just greets me with that phrase, like. Like Nel Carnal es mi carril. It's like uh, it just it's, it, he greets me every time I see him. That's awesome. I with love that it. Phrase. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> when I saw that when I was and, editing the video, I was like, oh, that was awesome. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, this is my street. This is my yeah. my, my town. My rules. That taxi, but uh, behind that, so that's the one that made me like actually uh, just. Uh, Spin my cog away, so uh, it was completely out of my, uh, my. That's where the, uh, uh, at the at that moment I, I was uh, riding with the loose cog, <laughs> so I was. Uh, I just had to slow everything over. Like, okay, we're ending this because uh, my cog just is just loose, so I don't want to crash. Crashing is a bad idea. It is a bad <laughs> idea. It's not so good. Mm -mm. I, here's a little fun fact. I did a little double tire on this elevated curb. I don't know if you knew that. I'm riding on the little. <laughs> I knew the, no, I, I knew the ride was over and I was like, ooh, I'm going to ride on this like tall, like elevated curb right here. Hopefully I don't. Fall. OK. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. Nice. <laughs> That's just for you. Only, you know, and everyone mm -hmm. else watching. And everyone listening. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was, and and that's uh, that's the same street we started, actually. Yeah. And this is basically so we, we going back to the, where we started. Mm -hmm. To to point zero where we started. So how many kilometers or miles Probably was again? this ride? Do you remember? Like, a, a I don't. Maybe forty kilometers. Yeah. Probably it wasn't that short either. Or maybe 30, 40, uh, it wasn't short. I think uh, the video, sure. yeah, I think the video ow, itself ow, is ow. like 30 minutes, ow. but I, I edited out some, uh -huh. uh, uh, a part where we stop so I can change the battery and stuff. So, mm -hmm. okay. okay. So yeah, thank you for sharing your thoughts on this. This yeah. is the little crit, the little, little crit, crit spot. Race. I remember. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, let's With do a the, crit right here. <laughs> I was told that there was uh, some, uh, at some point, they made a crit over there. I wasn't riding bikes by that, oh. by that time. But yeah, that's a, a crit over there would be nice. Really yeah, nice. Very narrow. It would be action packed. But it was getting like pretty dark. Uh, uh, maybe maybe it was going to rain or anything. I think it was. It looks I think really it, dark. I think it rained right after this. And that time of year in June, yeah. uh, I guess the rain in Mexico City, it just goes boom. It just pops, right? Yeah, we don't have like uh, we don't have like rains in summer. We have monsoons. Yeah, I mean it's 
it's you try to kill him right there. way yeah oh yeah the, the guy uh, uh, yeah you almost get killed you're so reckless uh, yeah he accelerated like oh that's great but anyway it's like uh, if we had crashed that would have been my my bad so, yeah i almost get killed again sorry <laughs> that's <all right. laughs> oh sorry but we're still here uh let me and uh, and my this. worst bike accident uh it wasn't riding that way. That's the funny thing. That's the 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 the, the accent in the where that the, I got run over there. Yeah. I, I wasn't riding that way. It's like oh, I just want to get home. With I tap tons of work. I didn't work anything. And I, I I lost um, the two projects, one client, just for uh, so it was ridiculous. So. So the, the, the those uh, wishful messages of me getting killed by being run over. Um, not this time. <laughs> yeah, terrible. People are just, uh, especially after your video in, in the comments, that was like an introduction to me, for me, about the how dark of a place the internet and YouTube can become because some of the com comments on your, um, on your video, I was just so, like I, I was having a conversation with my girlfriend about it. I was like, well, these are dark. They're like sexist or they're like saying, they're just being super aggressive towards you and I and I know it was because you were a woman and you were riding Very confidently and fast. So all these men were just like talking so much shit on there And I had a conversation with her like should I take these videos like should I remove the comments and then I Ended up eventually leaving all the comments up because I'm yeah. like, no, we should let these people people should see how fucked up these people are basically <laughs> Yeah, so it's, I, a, it's I an experiment. I, I mean, it, yeah. I messaged you and I was do, like, do, Anna, I'm so sorry about the comments. Like, I don't know. Like, I would, you know, I just feel bad. I'm sorry. But it's, <laughs> uh, I, uh, at the very beginning, I just really got, uh, I got really hooked up with some of them. Yeah. I, but I mean, there's nothing to do. I, what, there was this guy that made this terrible comment about like, just uh, the, the comment uh, said something like, Oh, I should. Uh, I would love to smell the the the, the bike seat. Oh, the saddle. And, yeah. I, and I, yeah, that, I I would love to smell that saddle. Like what? Wow. But what I answered, uh, and, and 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 I got an answer. The uh, it was like, cool. You want it? I I, I can sell it to you. <laughs> and the, <laughs> if you want to smell it, I, I cash in it's on, on sale. It. Yeah. I need a new one. So um, do you want? Uh, it's on sale. Yeah. Like special <laughs> price. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> so it, it's just turning things things over. Because if we girls like just retract, like uh, not not taking our our stand to it, like oh they're saying shit and they're the yeah there there there's always people trying to tell you how to do things, but yeah. uh, probably if you take a stand and you, you just protest uh, in in a way like. So yeah, I'm I'm going to take you up from from your hand and then move the things the way I want to. It's a way to stop it. Yeah. I mean, the guy. I don't know if the guy said anything else later. I just stopped reading and, and and answering to the comments because it was taking too much of my time. But I mean, that's what people are, and it's it's something to be ashamed of. But we need to learn from it. So yeah. I, 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 I was telling you yesterday, I had these two favorite comments, that, well, that one I, I missed yesterday. But the, the, the one of the guy that he, he's actually really angry because I'm speaking in English. Like, you're in Mexico speaking fucking, uh, fucking Spanish? I'm like, yeah, if you fail to read the video description, I cannot help you. Yeah, I mean, that's a discussion I don't want to get into. That's so. a, that's something I learned about YouTube too. No one reads the description. No, 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 no. It's like <laughs> I read they the just descriptions go and... of videos. I don't, know. I don't know why people. Yeah, don't. it's like what the fuck am I going to watch? Yeah. And um, and I, we were. Uh, I know you got to know that that part of Safa's video when he writes in, in Constituyentes downhill while everyone was going uphill. Uh, between the the trucks and everything, yeah, got into national news. Yeah, a year later, uh, so and, and and everyone got crazy, like oh, so no one watched the whole video, just 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 they just watched that that part segment, yeah. And so people love to take uh, things, uh, part of, parts of things, and take them out of context. 
and that's internet right now. So you just need to let it pass whatever it's not building. And but everyone gets distracted with this kind of things because they, they the the part of the the gossip. The, the, I don't know. It's just being in the conversation without knowing what you're talking about. Yeah. Exactly. That's, what, that's what the internet is about, actually. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people who, uh, you know, obviously seen your video and lots of other cycling videos, and they probably, maybe they own a bike, but they don't, you know, use it, you know, multiple times oh, a week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, I mean? the, I'm a cyclist, but I would never, okay, if you're a cyclist, then you should understand why that those decisions were made it doesn't mean that you need to be to, to agree with them yeah just to uh, just to know uh, that yeah the, the the road is full of potholes so she, uh, she's taking this part of the, the lane which is not even that but Masa, ben. <laughs> i have another dog and she's uh older and she's not taking any bullshit from the masa and <laughs> when she, gets, she just wants she wants to play I, th I think it's interesting when people write, um, if, I, if I see something I don't like, or not even to do with YouTube or anything, but if I just see something that I'm not about, I just don't put my energy into it. I don't respond to it. I don't, Yeah. like, it's just, it's crazy to me if someone saw something that they really hated so much that they're going to write a long old comment about it. Just mm -hmm. turn the video off. Or, t or stop watching the thing and don't i wouldn't yeah, put just, any of my energy into something i wasn't i didn't like now if i like something i'll you know usually i'll comment on it it's just kind of common mm -hmm. just the way part i live my life thing, like don't put uh, your energy into things you don't want to do or you're not about mm -hmm. so yeah, it's, it's like okay if you're still writing that way you're gonna get killed well probably but I don't need to know it, like, or, 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 or all those comments about guys, like the way I look, the way I, uh, I know, uh, I know how I look, I know, cause I purposely dressed that way that morning. Yeah. So I don't need to know it if you find it like good or bad, or if I look fat, if I don't, I, I don't care. Yeah. So it's, uh, wh wh whatever opinion, uh, you have of a lady's, uh, way of dressing or, or the way she looks, it doesn't matter. She can live without you know you know she knowing what you think and that's what guys need to work on like okay yeah thanks but i i don't need to know that you think that i look pretty or not yeah. that, that's uh that's a thing like uh, i'm not here for uh, for uh, no one's here uh, except models which purposely live from from their looks elsewhere no one else wants to uh, or cares to know if you you think they they look pretty or not or so that's a conversation that probably internet needs to end and it's not going to happen anytime soon. Yeah. It's going to take a long, a while. Mm -hmm. That goes back to our conversation earlier, a little bit about just uh -huh. the cycling industry. That's just a piece. And we're talking about the rest of the world now. Yeah. The it, same it, thing. it just extends elsewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, uh, I would like to open it up to questions for people in the chat. So any of you who have questions in the chat, drop them in now yeah. speaking of that yeah. um people are also very interested in uh from the video your whistle your whistling Ooh. is uh really good and they're like teach us how to whistle so what do you how, oh, how are you man, doing i don't remember how to <laughs> I, I i remember i was going to work once i had uh between my first bike which was a really nice whole uh holland type bike mm. this dutch bike the the one that has this the frame has this like downward yeah. tube and in a nice curve in order for you to if you're riding with a, a with, with a with a skirt or yeah. a dress you can hop in and hop in the in the most ladylike fashion that was my first bike and i remember i uh, how many times did you wear a dress with that bike or a skirt I'm probably two <laughs> I, yeah I, was, I never wear dresses i i i i i found myself like I, I, I'm doing this quarantine experiment that, uh, like, I just, just opened my wardrobe and I saw that I have, like, tons of clothing I don't use for anything. And I usually work for, walk for to, uh, to work. Hmm. That's what I did. Tomasa, ben. Este, <laughs> I'm going to give her something to munch. So, okay. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah. So, so Tomasa is so, her dog who's barking in the background, if you guys are new. Yeah. Uh, and Tomasa black. needs a snack. Look at, look at Tomasa. So Masi's taking a <laughs> a bone. 
A red bone. That's time out. Yeah. Time out bone. Yeah. Uh, a, a little bone. And uh, so I, I'm doing this experiment like when you have small kids and you let them dress the way they want. Mm. I could, uh, just pick whatever. So I, I'm trying to expand my wardrobe without uh, buying new stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I don't use skirts for riding or anything. So I just found that the bike was cool. And I, I, I remember I bought everything like uh, the, the the basket and the, 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 the light that was powered by the by the by the wheel and everything I, I i used to say in spanish that if i could i could have also hung up uh hung to the that bike a molcajete you know the 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 this uh stone bowl to make salsa yeah 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 <laughs> because we're like i i probably had done it like also a molcajete on top of it just in, in, and after i broke that bike of usage I uh, I bought another one that was uh, like a hybrid bike. Yeah. Just uh, it's like cyclocrossing, but it was a mountain frame, but with road tires. Yeah. And and brake discs. Yeah. Just, uh, and and I would and I realized I it was like riding a tractor, so I I became a really trashy uh, rider with it. I couldn't because you could just um, run over everything. Yeah, I, it was. Just, it was like buying a Hummer, like get out and, and, and everything. And I had a, <laughs> so I had, while riding that bike, I, I made myself really uh, skillful. Yeah. And I, so that's just, that's the the afterwards I I I, I got a, a fixed gear bike. So it's really funny to to watch how you change uh, yeah. around the the bikes you you own and everything. But uh, yeah, the whistle thing. I was riding the second bike, the one the which the the, the hybrid bike, and um, I got a bad incident in, into bad, bad incident with with a car, and my 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 bell got got, got like smashed on it. It just died. Yeah, I just yeah. Was thrown into pieces into into the street, and uh, afterwards I uh, had to learn. I, I teach myself to whistle. As, as a surviving task, it's, oh, a, it's full yeah. survival, the whistle thing. Just whistle I, I don't know everybody. how. Yeah, the high whistle, because I, I just whistle like it was slow and awkwardly, but this, I, I, I just tried to, to just polish my whistle because I was I, I was not into buying another door, uh, another bike bill. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, <laughs> it's like, I don't it's think gonna get bell. smashed again, so I'm not, I'm not wasting my money again on it. Yeah, and I, I learned it... to whistle and I don't use a uh, bell. I don't think a bell would work that well out there anymore. Anyways, you need like a yeah. a car horn, like a semi truck or a train. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> those, those air horns that you got, you 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 you, you smash into the. I, I think I got one the somewhere. Let me water see. cage. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that one. Uh, one of those. Yeah, actually. Is this it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love to see Cover riders your ears. into the city. <laughs> that one exactly that one yeah 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 um, i mean uh we got another um question here from uh oh i know that that's italian really those are italian coffee pots Ooh, I forget. nice <laughs> they're very good Buenas coffee. <laughs> Buenas <eras. laughs> uh what is your favorite city to ride? This is from questions from the chat. What is your favorite city to ride in? And what's your favorite road? Or what's your favorite riding a road bike or a track bike? Mm, it's different, you know. Um, so first, what's, what's your favorite place to ride in? Favorite place my, in the world, city in the my world. My favorite place in the world to ride. Uh, that's the tricky question because I haven't been around that much. So I, I, I remember uh, when, uh, that I went with Kenji uh, in New York to um, to this uh, Coney Island. Coney I Island, love yeah. Ride. Yeah, uh, I like okay. riding around. And I understand that I, since I've been riding around with a with the track bike, I've lost most of, you know, to the other part of the Hudson River, the the, the hilly parts. Yeah, yeah. On Nine Jersey, uh, I I don't know that, so probably that's gonna be a nice spot. I really love riding. Um, I don't know if Milan is probably by the by the time my favorite city to ride around. It's like so friendly and everything. But yeah. I also had this 
awesome ride. Uh, I was uh, staying with a friend in Paris and we made a 160 kilometer a century ride yeah. around Paris. And it was so awesome, but, but we were on fixed gear bikes. So we couldn't go to the, to an, it wasn't, it was mostly flat. Yeah. You're not going to the awesome. mountains. <laughs> yeah. It was like a 12 hour ride. It was so long and, but it was awesome. And so it's, uh, I, I, I don't know if there's a point of comparison, like riding, yeah. riding around Paris or we have really nice routes around Mexico city, uh, that, that I don't know, it's, I, but but they're different like yeah. uh riding uh, for riding fixed gear bikes maybe uh haven't been around enough so i've been yeah probably uh, but paris is nice also but i have a really short reference yeah i see so what what's your Indeed. what's your favorite bike to ride a tracker or a road bike what would you rather tracker, be on? a um, fixed gear or a road bike I, uh, city riding, I really prefer to do it on a track bike. It's ah. like easier for everything, but obviously long rides, uh, the road bike is more, a lot more comfortable. Yeah, for sure. For climbing, mm -hmm. so and it, being in the saddle. It's just, so uh, it, it comes out from the occasion. If I'm bumping around, probably fix your bike. So I, I, I tend to take more out and more my road bike because well, Mexico City is quite hilly around it, but but yeah, yeah. I I think I feel a lot better on my fixed gear bike. Okay, around the city. Yeah. Um, Juan has a question in the chat. He's saying, "Is your Chinelli aluminum or carbon?" Sorry. Is your is your track bike your Chinelli that you're riding in the video? Is it aluminum or carbon? Mm -hmm. I know the answer. To it's this. aluminum. Yeah. It's aluminum. Yeah, it's aluminum. It's a 2015 Bigorelli frame. It's pretty knocked over because uh you know air, airline issues so it's really smashed up by by the, up. the careful conscious way airline people treat your baggage, your baggage. yeah 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 handling the issues uh, but i uh, the the fork is carbon it's not the original fork i uh, just I smashed it on the, on the velodrome one the, the day I decided to stop wearing SPDs pedals for racing. Yeah, it was because I got unclipped on the velodrome and then hit the the motorcycle that was in front of me. Oh no! And I broke three ribs and it was pretty Ouch. bad. And the fork and so I, I, I that's the reason that I'm not riding the original uh, Chinelli fork for the for the bike. I smashed it. And but, then currently, right now, what is your gearing on your track bike? Uh, right now, it's it's set up. It's forty nine eighteen. Forty nine eighteen. Tipless. Nice. Yeah, I, I, uh, that's the that's the only way to make sure that I'm not overspeeding it. If I want to take things seriously, I just uh, pop in the fourteen cog mm -hmm. and uh, and you're ready to go. And wear proper pedals for it. Yeah, I know. Forty nine fourteen is a good, heavy, mm -hmm. solid gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, we got a question from Danny Hengel. He's wondering, do you ever do cross events? Do you ride on the dirt or trails at all? I haven't done it because I don't have a bike ah, for it. But are you interested? But, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You might just I, accidentally find yourself winning some cycle cross races. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the, other, the other day, uh, a good friend lent me a mountain bike and we were doing, uh, we, we went to doing some enduro mm -hmm. and it was so fun and I, he was like really impressed the, the way I didn't kind of chicken out uh, through the curbs and everything yeah. because of uh, actually fix your riding through the traffic. It's like riding in the downhill constituents, but instead of cars, you have like two trees. So it's not that different, except yeah. that the cars sometimes move and the trees won't move. But sometimes the trees I mean, look uh, like they're moving. Cause you're getting shook oh, around sometimes see, the yeah. trees look like they're moving because you're getting bounced around so much <laughs> and i love it so much and yeah. sometimes uh we have this i have these friends who we ride around and we do these crazy routes and some of them have like some uh parts that are not paid yet so i have done some kind of gravel riding with my road bike not that much but hmm. just uh, it's just uh 
maybe three, four kilometers to just connect to different roads that are in, otherwise there's no way we can just close the route the, that way. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I move around uh, in, gra in gravel, but I, I, I might want to get the proper bike for it. We might, we might have to talk to, uh, I know somebody over at uh, Affinity Cycles who has some gravel bikes coming out soon. We might have to, we might have to talk them in, get you guys to meet each other. Yeah, I, I, I also want to, to you know, my Big Rally track bike is really uh, already uh, got too many yeah, smashed it's for, and everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's time for, 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 for making uh, the shift. So Affinity is on my map. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They also, yeah, so they, I, they just came out with a gravel bike. You want to see it real quick? Yeah. Let me show you. Please. All I have is the frame, though. Yeah, but I. If you get to know if, if they if they happen to have a extra small track frame, I'm interested too. Okay. Like. Can you see it? Just saying. I'll show you down here. Cool. It's beautiful. Man, it's really cool. Yeah. God, it's a it's disc. Beautiful. It's through axle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful bike. Yeah, it's yeah, all raw, yeah. So. And 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 I think uh, aluminum for gravel is the best thing. Like aluminum for crit racing too. It, it's really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll talk to. I I know I might know a guy who uh, who does some stuff oh, over yeah. at Affinity. See. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was... uh, yeah, I don't know if I told you. I moved. I moved out of my old studio. Um, in Brooklyn into another studio so I share the space with affinity so oh, okay yeah okay. yeah I can okay, whisper and well. uh, I can whisper in his ear and and see yes please I'll introduce yes, you guys yes <laughs> yes 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 I let them know with it I, I I if they want to experiment with extra uh, extra small riders I'm totally <laughs> <in>. <laughs> yeah yeah um let me see uh Dun, 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 dun. Uh, there's some more chats here. Let's see. I'm just catching up. Sorry about this. No, you're, Healthy you're Greenwater fine. says, hola, huge fan. Oh, thank you, Healthy Greenwater. Thank you for the uh, super chat. I'm going to go buy me uh, a little croissant with that later. Uh, let's see. Oh, Danny Hegnell Hengel wants to know, He's really inter interested in industrial design. Uh, oh, and it would cool. be cool to hear more about the process and what it involves. What kind of products do you do for branding or design for? Okay, I, the thing I do most for uh, as an industrial designer, you know, we used to say that, uh, I had this friend that said that uh, industrial design is everything you see, which actually is pretty much accurate. And, um, but you can, the, the cool thing about industrial design is you can take it everywhere. If you're more artsy, you can do like uh, more get into object thing. Uh, I have these colleagues that have this brand that's called Arte Joyas, and they pretty much do by 3D whatever they get into their mind, and they're making jewelry, and then they have really cool pieces. You can do jewelry, you can do air, well, uh, vehicle design, like bike design, and um, but I, uh, uh, I got more for work issues into retail and event production. Mm. So I, I'm pretty, uh, I'm, I consider myself like a square designer. I, I don't experiment that much, even though I'd like to. I'm, I really, I'm really lousy at drawing, but I got really good in, since I didn't draw that well. I made myself pretty accurate in 3D, uh, representing like photo realistic rendering and oh, and see. just just quite solutions like straight straightforward solutions for 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 different things. So I the most the my my biggest work is for retail, retail experience and everything. But it's not about creating things. The the cool thing about being an industrial designer is that you get to understand the way people think. Like the way the that comment that we were saying uh, the, just a while ago about the video, like you take the decision to write for whatever you think it's more safe for you, 
that's a criteria that we learn to uh, to track in industrial design. So why people make which decisions if I'm going to repurpose this jar as that 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 that's what you get to analyze on a user. Ah, okay. So you it's not about just creating things and using 3D and being in the workshop, which is pretty cool, but also learning to know how people think, why they think that way, which, which cultural assumptions you have to take into account that like the ones with that we in Latin America barely wear shorts. Yeah. Uh, that why? And it's also, I, I think that for, for instance, for that observation, there's a somehow I think religion plays a part. Ah, okay. Uh, so you you get to understand your user in a different way, and industrial design that now needs to focus on creating the experience, Excellent. knowing that yeah. you have everything around it's the user just experience. Think, user experience. Uh, yeah. User experience is uh, at least in Latin America, is, it is still on the box. It's still on the screen. Like, ah, oh, do you know? Do you feel that this website works or not? But it's not just for graphic designers. Uh, industrial design takes it out. Like uh, we are analyzing the with the pandemic thing. Um, every everyone is switching to, you know, retail stores are closing, but everyone's switching to delivery and e-commerce. Yeah. But. The delivery can fuck your user, your consumer experience. Definitely, yeah. If it's late, so, you, there's uncontrolled uh, things happening. If your yeah, packages yeah. are late or you don't know, or what if the it's broken, like, or yeah. if it's lost, damaged, whatever, or it's just uh, if the timing is bad, if you have bad follow up with the call center yeah. and you don't know where your package is, even though it's not lost. But if you have three days when your package is lost and you have no idea what's happening. And you're trying to reach the call center, which is collapsed because you don't have the infrastructure. So industrial design also aims to understand all the things that happen around, and not not around, uh, not just the physical thing. Like you have this product, and if, if it, sorry, um, mm -hmm. uh, but if 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 the if the product is you can you can have a good product, but if the whole thing around the product is not working. You're not sticking to it. Like, you're you can buy an excellent cell phone, but if if warranty is lousy, you won't buy it again. Sorry, Apple. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it uh, so you, it's a whole study around. It's just learning to think outside the box and industrial design needs to stop being a, uh, about the object. Ah, that's cool. I didn't know. That switch is, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, and, it, and it's going to be the, the way it's going to shape the, the industry later. Like, so industrial design is just on the middle point. Yeah. Because you get to, you have the, if you need to change something in the thing in order for the software and the hardware and the, and the human interaction and the, all the logistics around it to work, you can do it. But if not, you can you you analyze the whole thing. So you now product design is not just the uh, the physical thing, but all all everything around it. Yeah. So that's how that's what industrial design needs to aim today. I'm I'm not sure if I answered the question. No, you totally answered the it, question. Right. Yeah. For me, anyways, I have a very mm -hmm. way better understanding of industrial design currently. Yeah. So that's why it's uh, it's probably uh, we won't have any retail design for a while, but uh, it's not that we're shutting down. It's just we're it's taking shifting. retail elsewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's shifting. So um, if, if there's no retail, the, the next thing is to enhance delivery experience. Yep. Um, a good follow up question here is William is saying your English is good. She's saying, thank you. Very good. Like, how did you learn English? Mm, I, uh, my parents uh, enrolled me while, while a kid and just in this bicultural school. Ah. So I, <laughs> I I learned uh, I learned to read and to and to count and the alphabet and everything, in in an English environment. Mm. But you know it's like like phonetic learning and just I learned to read first in English. 
Wow. Uh, so it's it's really weird because being in Mexico, everyone talks to you in Spanish. Out, yeah, out you're gonna learn. Spanish. So the school was like a bubble where everything was in English, oh. and uh, in Spanish uh, you learn the playing by ear and everything. Yeah, exactly. Because mm -hmm. you're growing up around it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Here's another question of kind of around work. Is uh, food delivery by bike huge in Mexico City? Is there lots of like mess, uh, messenger work, mess life? Um, you know, it wasn't, uh, but um, there's, uh, we got Uber, Uber Eats and everything. Yeah. But um, I, I, I don't use them, the, those platforms. So I'm, yeah. I won't uh, got to get, get into the how experiences. I, I've heard there it's not that good, but ever since the pandemic, there's there are places that are getting their own messengers. Definitely. So, and we're trying also to support that place. Like I don't, I prefer not to order from places via Uber Eats and everything. Just uh, getting into places that had their own bike messengers or, and but but bike bike messaging is getting bigger. Yeah. And fortunately, yeah. So, yeah. Would you ever? Would you ever? Uh, you ever think of trying it? That's I have thought about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, at the very beginning, I thought about getting into Uber. Yeah. So uh, thinking it would be so funny if I get to deliver, like I don't know, here's your pizza, and <laughs> and it's me. Ding dong. <laughs> but uh, I well, it's always an alternative, but maybe not for food delivery. I'll just go into bike messaging. Like with, I don't know, uh, documents. <laughs> yeah, Legal. documents or stuff or oh, yeah. uh, riding around in a cargo bike or yeah. just uh, the the full package. If um, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm going to be that good though. <laughs> <laughs> Claudio, uh, he just sent uh, 20 ARS. I'm not sure what currency that is, but that's. Uh, He's he's saying uh, affinity uh, collaboration with Anna Puga Puga. So, Whoa! Yeah, yeah. So every super chat is another uh, another step forward to a collaboration between affinity. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. That that would be so nice. Yeah. Uh, um, someone's uh, Jacques is asking. Uh, he's coming late to the show, so I'll just go over it real quick. It just says, uh, "How did Terry and Anna meet? How do we become acquainted?" and I think it was be before um, it was through Safa or Eric. Someone gave me your contact and I was like, yo, hey, I'm here filming. Uh, Going to do videos with Safa for this YouTube channel or whatever. And then we just uh -huh. met and filmed, right? Isn't that what yeah. happened? Because yeah, I only yeah, hung yeah, out was... with you that day because I think I, I was trying to hang out like a day before or two days before we went and had drinks or food. I tried to invite you or something, but it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, uh, uh, got messed up with with, with the work issues, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah, it was through Safa actually. Yeah, sweet. So Safa introduced Cheers, us. Cheers, Safa. <laughs> Safa. Um, let's see. Wow. Safa left Dan a huge uh, gap in the bike scene here in Mexico. I bet. Uh, I bet. We, we we miss him. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Uh, Danny is really interested. <laughs> He's really interested in your work in uh, industrial design. He's asking if it would be cool to plug your online portfolio if you have a website or something. Oh yeah. If you uh, are comfortable with putting one. that up, I can I can write it down and add it to the description. Oh yeah. Let me see if I can um, just send it. I'll just send it through uh, Instagram messaging. Okay. And then Perfect. yeah. Uh, I'll throw that on there for you, I Danny. Yeah, the because I, I I just have a, like I I don't do talk about my work in social networks. Mm. It's kind of pointless. And then since I am a freelance consultant, I have this um, this I don't uh, I, I wait a year or six months to to upload new 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 info to to my website. So it's been maybe a couple of years ever since I actually uploaded something. I need to, now that I'm on vacation, I should uh, bring my portfolio up to speed. I've been I've been doing cool things for retail in Colombia. Oh, that's Funny cool. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been working remotely to, with Colombia and I have two 
insanely amazing projects about it. So I'm, I'm going to upload them. Let me let me find out where the I left my portfolio. Like that. Uh, let's see. Uh -huh. While you're doing that, I'll I'll just go and uh, I might miss some of these questions. Sorry, everybody. I'll take a couple Ooh. more. We're, we've been on for about two hours and wow. with you, yeah. So, oh yeah, so I, I just it'd be cool to I wrap it. It would be cool to wrap it up with some. Uh, you know, I don't want to take Ooh, your whole cool. day. It'd also be cool to wrap it up if you have any uh, anything that you haven't had a chance to say or that you want to say before. Uh, before I take, I'm going to take, maybe I'll take, yeah, two, I'll take two more questions. Okay. All right. Thank you. Two more questions and then we'll wrap up with anything you want to say here. So let me see. Lots I'm up of, to remote work also. <laughs> <laughs> lots of, uh, lots of people, um, really, really like your writing. There's lots of love here in the chat. So, um, um, they, People love your laugh. <laughs> Greta says that she loves your laugh. Um, then... Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. Lots of backward see. laughing. <laughs> Lots of big fans of Anna in here. Thank you. <laughs> um, Greta says you are um, Anna at the moment. Wait. It's great that you are in the morning routine. You are my favorite female cyclist of all time. Thank so. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. All right. It's, it's something cool to listen or to read uh, ever since I don't uh, I consider myself like far away from being the best or the faster, uh, the fastest or, or anything. Mm. But ah, thank you. It's really cool. Uh, and you know everyone every cyclist has a story and i think mine got accidentally pretty far away which is the best thing ever <laughs> i like that i like your story how you just fell into cycling and then you just kind of fell into it and <laughs> that you're you have something else going on other than cycling I, I always think it's important to stress that to the channel to people here at least um to, you know because a lot of people are like uh, there's some people that are a little younger maybe and they're just like bike 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 I want to be like this it's like I always think it's important to have a couple things to be interested in and, and it's cool to, for you to bring in your uh, insight on just having a professional the, the, the side background. of things that's outside of cycling because it's you know mm -hmm. it shows that you can do both it's it's a perfect balance like yeah. uh, I, I it's Sometimes I have like monetary issues, but I, I found out that, that I, I, I'm doing pretty well both things. Uh, yeah. I find I, I, I used to say that you need to find like three hobbies, ones, one that keeps you healthy, one that pays the bills, and one that, that, ma that maintains you creative. So I, this is like a nice sweet spot. Yeah, that's great. So it's, that's but also, education is important, but bikes are important there. <laughs> <laughs> important there, I love it. Important there. <laughs> so I think we caught up on the chat. So let's, yeah, is there anything you want to say before uh, before we go? We let you go and I wrap this up. Uh, not really. I think uh, thank you so much for the space, for the for your time and 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 the idea. I I love the idea. It's just uh, so cool to to like bound together and, and talk about i don't know stuff like bikes yeah um, it's it was so cool to to have this space and being able to grow to, to continue growing even though things are like weird and so it's just a shift of focus into new opportunities so it's thank Definitely. you so much for for the space and the, and, the, and the time. No, thank you so much for being a part of this. I was really thank happy you. when I, I like wrote to you like, hey, are you interested? And I was, you were like, yeah, sweet. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, it's super cool. really cool. Because people yeah. were asking about you when I started doing this. Um, yeah. So they really wanted to hear from you. And I haven't heard from you since I was in Mexico. So actually, uh, yeah, we, we, we were in each other like, like sporadically, but yeah. uh, this is so nice. And I, 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 I've read like different comments about like, yeah, you should upload videos and everything. I don't, I have no idea where to start. So if uh, any suggestions, like 
I, I really, I have videos of me riding around the city, but this, uh, this avalanche of comments, the main comments and everything, just prevented me to upload some stuff I have. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I, knowing that it's part of it and just, you just need to slip hater comments away. Uh, if you have any ideas or anything that can be, I would say for you, especially to not be afraid to put yourself not like vlogging, but put yourself in front of the camera because I, I think oh, people, yeah, so that... people really like you on the bike, but I think they really are attracted to you and your personality and they can tell you're a good person. So I think to not to be afraid to show yourself. I think yeah, to, to talk to the camera. A little, maybe. a little bit. It doesn't need to be a traditional. I don't, I don't know hey, how, guys, what I'm it is. Yeah, exactly. Watch you, my don't, face you, again. Yeah, you don't need to do that, but I, like, um, you could you can say a couple things before we start or you can just introduce where you're about to ride or something and then just film your ride and then just have a little piece of yourself in there, you know, and then. Yeah, yeah. Because I think yeah, people want to hear I'm, from you as well. <laughs> I, I think I, 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 I'm actually shy. So it's like talk to the camera about what? I know. <laughs> like, no, I, I totally I totally get it. This is all yeah. this whole thing is very new for me. Yeah, I've just been get, practicing. getting yourself like put yourself in front of the camera like why am I even doing this? Like exactly. But it, it, it helps a lot to 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 talk to someone. Like not yeah. talking to the camera like uh like uh, uh mm -hmm. hi uh, doing faces, watching your all the time your the face you're making to the cameras, delete the video. I, it's, I mean, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Like, oh yeah, I look so terrible. Like yeah. the the angle and so talking to someone and making it, make it feel natural. Like yeah. that's how I think interaction works. So yeah, I should try. Um, uh, now that I got some uh, accidental spare time. Yeah. Um, also, don't yeah, be afraid it's... to put those videos, those older videos you had. You said you have sitting around. You should just mm -hmm. don't be afraid of the comments, you know, I just have, hit, them with uh, some, hit them with some positivity, hit them back with some positivity. Yeah. That's what I do. They yeah, can't, they yeah. Can't do I, I, I also is like really afraid of the time uh, the video editing takes. It's it takes like, a long time. <laughs> it's 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 not. A, it's a, how do you say in Spanish? It's like uh, it's not to make enchiladas the way we say it in Mexico, like it's it's something that to be it's just not filming it you film it we we made a, a a 30 something minute video and it took took you how many hours to get the the right thing the the sound that's so it's, it's something to take into so i i i i'm gonna try to make some space into learning how to edit and yeah and stuff because i guess an, yeah another thing i would say is um getting into it it's like a lot of stuff it's just kind of how i approach things i i kind of stumble through things as i mm -hmm. as i do it and i would i would recommend stumbling through just one thing at a time like okay, learn okay. like whatever yeah. camera you have like if it's a gopro or whatever learn the camera first don't worry about the sound quality don't worry about uh you know um other things just the camera and then until you perfect it and then start then you can add sound and then or then you learn editing and then stumble through the editing for a while until you figure it out and it's kind of like just one step at a time and you can go back and that's why i like youtube i'm not scared yeah. to put stuff that's not professional because i do yeah, this kind of stuff it's, it's, professionally and i it's always been a place for me to just put like rough drafts or like kind of things that i'm not totally finished with but i just want to try mm -hmm. it out and then as I keep trying or you keep trying, you just smooth out the things that work. And then maybe you stop doing the things that you felt were awkward, like talking to the camera or something like that. You can get rid of the weird parts of it and, and further develop the things that you think w was a good fit. And you just do it one yeah, thing yeah. at a time. And nice. That's I think a great people will love, love your, uh, really your personality. So I think definitely you need to have some of that in there though <laughs> yeah because I, I i also got like fed up about talking in instagram just about bikes 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 yeah, bikes. yeah it's uh, I, I i got bored of myself so yeah i wonder if uh, I, i'm not no, i not i don't wonder it's uh, i'm sure pretty much other people got pretty much bored about 
likes like so it's because you it, know it, yourself since, there's it more is, to you it than is not bikes. like everything in my life i, I, I the, like i i bike uh, maybe at noon i'm off with biking for the rest of the day and yeah. so it's and not every day and so it's like just uh I, and i think this uh pandemic thing also has made us notice uh, how fed up are, are we about people that i don't know i have this issue with people that are actually recording themselves doing exercise like we, we know you're fit <laughs> but come on and I, like oh and the second session of the training session of, oh thank you as i'm but we're no pros i yeah. mean if a pro writer does it because she or he is pro and they're not so into this oversharing about how fit they are they are it's like yeah. so it's thank you but uh, no, no, it's no. I don't. I don't know. It's. I have this issue. Like, uh, and uh, I'm doing burpees. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we <laughs> never cared anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think but people. Yeah. People are um, right now just maybe they're because there's no interactions with people. They're trying. Everyone's trying so hard to connect with people, and they're filming everything because they're kind of bored. And here's a little backstory on streaming stuff. Apparently, mm -hmm. all webcams, all like streaming soft or hardware that you need to do this kind of stuff is sold out. Oh yeah, everywhere. Yeah, so, so that just shows I, like I, lots I, I'm of. I'm kind of, of not people, impressed with yeah, it. Lots of people are yeah. like trying to get into. They're just. I think it's just like a yearning to just connect because we're all trapped in our little bubbles. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank but you for like, connecting with us. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you so much for the invitation. It's like yeah. opening a door. Like uh, I didn't think uh, remotely like uh, anything I do outside the, the bicycle can be interesting. But I, I realize probably yes. Yeah, people want to know. And uh, and it's a, and I, I think I, I see all these all these people like oversharing their life and uh, while being uh, on the lockdown and. It's like I don't want to. I, I sometimes I think I, I think I don't want to be like them. Like ah uh, yeah. But uh, every every people every person is different. So for the three four people that might think that this space might be interesting, I um, promise to try to do something. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, thank you. Just do the <laughs> thank things. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for letting me sing it. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being on here. I guess we're gonna wrap with that. So. I appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for having the chat with me and talking over Thank our you. film. Um, we're going to have to see each other in person soon and, and catch up again. Please, please, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. So if, if you come to Mexico City, if I go to New York, or we, if we get to meet up in any, any other city, please. Yes, definitely. As soon as everything we're, is back to normal, soon, we, should, we should definitely hang out. Absolutely. Uh, ever since we this, we both decided that we're not traveling anywhere without our bike. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it's a bike trip. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shari. Have a good day. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. That was uh, that was Anna, and uh, hopefully everything just worked for you guys there. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and. If I didn't get to your questions, you can always drop the questions in the comments of the video um, and um, we can get myself and Anna to answer those there. Um, if there's anything else, anyone on the show that you'd like to see, um, you can drop that down there as well. Uh, special shout out to everyone who sent in some cash and uh, <laughs> super chatted me some money. Appreciate that. Uh, and all the channel members, Appreciate the uh, support over the last few months. Thank you guys for tuning in. And now I'm going to end with my end screen. Peace.